Hello everyone, uh, this is the Reverie Roundtable, which we have Mondays, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, surprisingly 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, uh, so uh, we have an amazing group of guests, I'm going to introduce them, and from there we will uh, uh, we'll talk about stuff. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and, I'm sorry, does anyone hear the, the background, like, honking? No? Good. All right, because well, mad people are honking uh, behind me for some fucking reason. I don't know. <laughs> is the Freedom that? Convoy, has it made it to your area? <laughs> <laughs> From Ottawa to you? Finally, I'm sorry, yeah. Prime. I, I, I sent them. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a protest. <laughs> it keeps just Prime guy's just out here. Pr Prime guy's just out here proving that the more leftist you are, the more clown world just kind of consolidates around you. No, oh, fair enough. Yeah, I don't know why it's honk, just honk. like... I'm like, I'm trying to talk while just mad people are honking. Just, I don't know what the fuck is happening. Uh, and they're starting up, up again. All right, moving on. Uh, so we are uh, going to start introducing uh, uh, people. We'll start with our friend, Fanatic. Fanatic, back at it once again, right? Mouthful, right? Uh, of knowledge, right? That's, he's about to spit <laughs> knowledge. <clears throat> That's what that is. Uh, so, <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, my man, Fanatic, how are you? Man, I'm doing great. I don't spit nothing but knowledge. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I think these will be some pretty good topics, especially when we start dealing with the don't say gay bill. You already know I'm a fan. I don't know why it's so consistent that I'm always eating on stream now, but I don't know. It just seems like I'm always happening. Like I'm doing whatever the freak I'm doing, and at the last second, I'm going to grab a bite while I do the dang podcast. But we make it work. I'm excited. All right. Brain food. Brain food. I need to, uh, need to power the engine, all right? Uh, so uh, next... Uh, someone who never eats on stream, it seems like. Uh, Scott, uh, Scott, thank you for coming through. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Um, how are you doing? Well, uh, I'm a fat fuck trying to be better, so I'm on keto and I fast during stream. I, I, I make sure that I don't eat during stream so that so that there's a period of time I'm not doing that. But um, I see you, fanatic. I get it. You know what I mean? You, you, it's a power move, right? Because he's just he's got so much of that confidence. He's like. He just, you know, like when Destiny was eating that pizza, you know, it's just, it's just a power move. That's all that is. I'm doing great. Um, you know, I'm Fabian Liberty. At this point, you probably know who I am. And um, if you want to see some wild shit and some uh, base takes, come check us out. All platforms, Fabian Liberty. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. We have our friend Lactoid. Lactoid, uh, one of our absolute Lactoid. Okay. I, I don't know why. I think you're going to laugh at me when I say this, right? Uh, but... <laughs> I think I already know what you're going to say, but go ahead. I'm sure you don't. <laughs> uh, but uh, when I, uh, you know, because I got people who like show up like from like all over the world sometimes, right? Um, to this platform. But for some reason, I always think of you as a Canadian. Like I have to check myself. You literally have a flag behind you. I know. I know. <laughs> you have a flag behind you. Why the you. fuck do you have an American flag, you Canadian? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> And a Swedish one too. <laughs> I know, I know, we, I know, we all, Ukrainian, it's, sweet, sure. it's Swedish, but oh, is it? Oh, I thought uh, it was Ukrainian. No, I, I know we all look the same, Prime, but I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Buddy. <laughs> no, you're good. I mean, uh, ain't that facts though? <laughs> uh, okay, we'll we'll talk about that in a bit, I'm sure. Um, thank you so much for having me on Prime. Uh, you can find me, everybody, Anti Communism United, Discord, and Twitch. Looking forward to a fun conversation. Uh, thank you, Wick. Um, instead of rating to Prime, he rated to me. So, ooh, ooh, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, thank you. Uh, what did you think I was going to say? What's What's Fuck getting Wick. a raid feel like? Is that Is that a thing I, that people get on Twitch? They get raids? Yeah. Like I don't no, know what that's about. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Fabian, Fabian Liberty's like, do, do you get money from raids? Is it like giving bits? Yeah, like what is that? I don't know what that is. I, I never get to experience. I, I'll those. read you sometime. I I, I will. Oh. Um, <laughs> what what I, I get one about once a month from like Rob Nor, and that's about it. And then my other other people from my community. Black toy. So what I thought you were gonna say is, you know, look, I, I recently got I, trying to look professional. I recently got a haircut. Then I put on this white shirt, and I was sort of like looking in the in the fucking camera. And is I it blank? Saying, I was saying, oh God, like. <laughs> kind of looking like an ideology that I really don't subscribe to. Uh, <laughs> um, it's kind of uh, yeah. You're right. You're upsetting. right. You know what? You kind of do look Mormon. 
a little uh, bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> looking a little looking a little purer there, Lactoid. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh god. I look like you're about to leave and hop on a bicycle at any moment and start telling people about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um but no, I I I, I wouldn't think of that of you. I wouldn't think that oh, it wouldn't that you. wouldn't occur to me, right? Um, but you not being American apparently would, <laughs> despite your decor. Yeah. I, I don't know which one I'd prefer, to be honest, that you think of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Corey. No, it's, it's high praise to be called a Canadian, be mistaken. Like, we should all be so lucky. <laughs> uh, Corey with the jokes. Okay, Corey, thank you for being here, <laughs> friend. Uh, we haven't seen you a, a little bit, not too uh, long. But uh, thank you for being here. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, as always, super grateful to be here. Uh, always happy to receive the invite uh, and try to never take it for granted. Even though I know you're just having inviting me just for representation, you need at least one person with the bisexual lighting. I know it's largely about that, but Have I'm still grateful my to be here. Uh, well, if this is your your proclamation, by all means, go for it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just asking if you see my background that. or not. If you want to have a bisexual off, let's do it. It's got the lighting, uh, so I, I'm just curious if you saw it or not. Uh, Sproticus, yeah. I don't know that that's a game you want to play. <laughs> I feel like that's a game you might end up losing, buddy. I'm just Maybe. asking. I'm just asking if you see hey, it. I'm all for you the bisexual call lighting off. out. It's fine. Let's do it. Uh, but yeah, I'm Corey Campbell. Uh, Corey Campbell 84 on Twitch, uh, on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, it Literally, it's Corey Campbell. Uh, and again, pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm really looking forward to getting to it. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have the Sprouticus. Sprouticus, uh, thanks for, uh, coming through. Um, uh, nice to see you again. I never mistake where you're from, Sprouticus. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> so you're all American to me. Uh, so... <laughs> I'm not as polite as Lactoid. Um, oh, <laughs> so, uh, the, I, I am, uh, the Sprouticus. You find it on Twitch and Twitter at the Sprouticus. Um, I, uh, I, I am Twitch's very own wildcard. Um, and that's why I've got the American flag, the dead giveaway of the conservative, and the bisexual lighting, the dead giveaway of a liberal. Because you don't fucking know what I'm gonna say, okay? Uh, so I'm excited to get into this, I'm excited to talk, and excited to debate. Appreciate it, Prime. Absolutely. Alright, uh, next, uh, we have... <laughs> our friend LSP. LSP always comes up with a new, like, uh, title. Like, I never know what he's gonna, what he's gonna come up with. Um, but friend, LSP, thank you for being back here. Uh, much appreciate. LSP, will you manage to stay here the entire panel without strumming off? Okay. No Good idea. Do that. That's a no. Right. Thank you. <laughs> we'll uh, see. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, hey, cool. You already know my gripes. Mm. All right. Meaning the other people on the panel. All right. Moving forward. <laughs> oh, fuck. I didn't want to be rude. Dick. <laughs> we have uh, our Dark Lord and Savior. Our man, Yubi is back uh doobie uh thank you for uh nearly getting me canceled at the start of my stream much appreciated buddy you're welcome you know do whatever i can help you out friend <laughs> is okay. that a trans flag in your back right now lsp yes fucking cringe oh, yeah. um. uh, all right uh so let's get started then um and we'll have one other person join us that just like happened like while you guys are talking so hopefully we'll get that another person here soon <clears throat> all right uh so first topic today marks one year since the taliban took back control of, of, of afghanistan as the u.s withdrew the religious hardliners are in charge and they have used their position to reverse two decades of female advancement that is just one of many examples of their civil repression looking back was it a mistake for the u.s withdrawal the way it did should we have stayed for decades more in an effort to permanently change the culture? Or is it not any of our business what happens in Afghanistan now that the threat of Al-Qaeda uh, is gone? Yeah, so um, apparently yeah, today is a very auspicious uh, anniversary um, where the U.S. definitely officially lost that war. Um, uh, and I, I, I saw an article, you know, talking about this. And uh, there was, like, you know, uh, a, a, like a demonstration by Afghani women, I guess it was in the capital. Um, but they marched to some sort of a Taliban government 
um, stronghold and then, you know, got, like, uh, beaten with, like, the butts of uh, guns and, like, got shot at uh, by the Taliban. And because, you know, they were asking that uh, girls be allowed to have an education past the sixth grade, uh, that kind of stuff, you know, brutal. Uh, so uh, it, it got me thinking about this, and, I, and I'm curious as to what people feel like, you know, now that we have this much time passed, people have rethought um, their stances or, uh, or what? So we'll start with Fnatic. Yeah, I think going to war with an ideology is a little bit ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> that was not a winnable war. We're never going to change their entire way of thinking. And I think all attempts to do so are just futile. Um, I think ultimately, like, yeah, we, I think we did the right thing pulling out. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't, I can't say about all of the logistics 100%. Um, but like, I just know that, yeah, we, that was not, we were losing people. It just didn't make any sense. Again, they have a right to their own way of life. Even if we disagree with it, even if it's oppressive, it's their way of life and they have a right to it. We can't continue to police the rest of the world. I think it's a, a, a fool's errand. Um, it was something that was never going to happen because you were going to war with an ideology and you'll never win that war. So I think, you know, it sucks what they're going through. Um, I love Western values, but I just don't like the idea of like us dying to kind of like force these values on other people who don't, who aren't interested. Thank you. Got it. Yeah, I agree with everything that um, Fanatic said, but I kind of want to put this into an analogy because this weird, like, this weird look at Afghanistan is like falling apart. Um, and like, you know, what should we have done? It, it almost, it's almost feels like Americans have this view that, like, to put it in like a relationship perspective, right? That like you've been beating your wife for twenty years. And then you stop beating your wife and you thought that that would like fix your marriage, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, Operation Cyclone training the, you know, the, training them to fight against the Mujahideen and, and like, you know, the, the Carter doctrine and like hell, even going back as far as the Eisenhower doctrine, the fact that we're still currently to this day, both the Trump administration and the Biden administration had the AACC Picatinny deal um, where they're spending three hundred and fifty million dollars in um, funneling in guns to, to play to people like Al Nusra and um, Hayat Tahir Al Sham. Right. Like like we've spent decades and de more than anyone that has been alive on this panel and more than three of them combined. We have been fucking over this part of the world and then we pulled out. And then like things are bad and we're like, oh, maybe we should have stayed like, no, like what we need to do is we, you know, as, as much as Trump was a complete idiot in terms of foreign policy and committed horrible crimes, especially when talking about Yemen, um, what we need to do is we need to take a, a, a long, hard look at what the successes of Jared Kushner and we need to realize that opening up trade and normalizing trade relations and trying to culturally influence people via that system is probably the only way that we're ever really going to be able to fix this. Um, if you want to send in UN peacekeeping kind of missions, I think one need only look at the history of how that's worked out to know that that's probably not going to help the situation at all. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that until until they want to change, we're not going to be able to do it without killing a lot of people, bombing a lot of people, committing horrible fucking crimes against humanity, and then turning more people against us in the process. Thank you. Perfect. I think the pullout was, do uh, was done poorly. Uh, I think we at least should have kept troops there long enough to pull out all of our equipment. The fact that we left so many guns for the Taliban is a shameful. And I think even the equipment that we were able to sufficiently destroy had significant value and was acquired at the great expense to the taxpayers. Um, that said, I do think the pullout should have been done. The prior government of Afghanistan was hopelessly corrupt and militarily ineffective. And despite decades there, we made no real progress and we had no real opening. Um, you know, this isn't like Vietnam. There's, an there's analyses that indicate that we could have won Vietnam. Here, there was no indication we were going to win in Afghanistan. We weren't combating some global force for evil. Instead, we were trying to uproot a traditionalist authoritarian regime in a backward country with enough natural defenses to withstand every invasion has undergone in the past 200 years. I do think we were noble there, and I think it was a noble effort. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, we have to acknowledge that we failed. And, um, and the, us being there simply wasn't serving any further purpose. The only solution um, that I think we could do uh, that 
would have gone even better um, than just keeping it long enough to get our equipment out. I think we also could have kept boots on the ground long enough to offer every Afghan woman free travel to the U.S. and the men can stay. Therefore, the oppressed people, you know, get freedom. And then Afghanistan also suffers a major demographic crisis. And then we can go back in 50 years once there's like nobody there. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, our friend lagged to it. It's in favor of a very slow form of ethnic cleansing. Thank you so much. Right? Yeah, the you're, great you're, replacement theory, but are, real this time. You are looking more like <laughs> that ideology every second now. Um, I'm offering free immigration. This is the most democratic <laughs> plan I can think of. Uh, okay. Thank you. Just to the women. That's even better. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, let's go to uh, court. Campbell. You know, it might actually solve our uh, mass shooter situation if we get a few less incels in this country. You know, mm -hmm. think about it. Uh, mm -hmm. I helps the sexual market. I there. actually fear for the women that ha would have to get in relationships with these incels. Actually, uh, maybe it's that's an improvement. I guess an improvement uh, from Afghanistan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, going from you know hell to something less hellish, much less hellish. Sure. Uh, but I, I echo many of the sentiments uh, that Fanatic um, and Scott from Fabian Liberty brought up in terms, uh, I don't know that I fully agree with the example of beating your wife, but I, I think I take the point of, you know, recognizing when a strategy isn't working um, and having the cognitive flexibility to understand, you know, when to call it quits uh, and to adopt a different strategy. Um, as much as I'm not comfortable uh, with all the horrific treatment uh, of women and not just exclusive women, but many people of Afghanistan, the majority, um, and all the human rights atrocities, uh, but it doesn't seem like going to war and quote unquote nation building uh, was the way to do it, or at least at some point it's pretty clear not working. And so you have to adapt. Uh, and probably many of the things that uh, Scott brought up are probably, I don't know whether they're more effective, uh, but I think arguably maybe in the long term, more effective uh, and probably lead to, yeah, better outcomes. Uh, that more or less just sums up my position, but I'm still like open, like, uh, I'm not fully committed to my position. I don't. I really don't know how I feel about this, knowing what's going on. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you uh, so much, Spartacus. Uh, we left Afghanistan, um, and we shouldn't have left yet. Uh, we left in very poor timing. Um, we left on a very bad deal. If we were going to leave, we needed to apply restrictions onto the government of or onto the Taliban, knowing the Taliban was going to take over, we should have applied restrictions. We should have kept the Air Force base. Um, we should have maintained the Air Force base and kept that base as ours. Um, there is no reason for us to give that up. Uh, there, there were so many fatal mistakes in leaving Afghanistan that it wasn't even worth leaving. Um, so in adapting doesn't mean you have to give up. Adapting can mean taking a different strategy while you're there. Adapted can mean a ton of different things. I.e., we left the we left the Afghanistan citizens. We left them just to dry. That's what we did. We left them to dry. We said, "Hey, you get to deal with it. We're gone. Hope you have fun." Oh, and by the way, anyone that helped us, you're welcome to come to the United States. But anyone that didn't help us, yeah, bye. Hope you have fun without without women's rights and without any kind of human rights whatsoever. Hope you have fun and uh, being ruled by a terrorist group. Absolutely ridiculous. Thank you so much. All right, uh, let's go to <clears throat> LSP. Um, okay, so I took some notes, uh, and there's a few disagreements I just have. Um, I, I, I have to say, it's so frustrating to me when, when I listen to, like, wealthy, first world, Relatively wealthy. I'm not saying you're all on the job, but rel relatively wealthy first world Americans who really will never like see the inside of conflict ever in their life. Not not to the extent that Afghanistan has. Look at a place like that and look at people they know are going to be vulnerable, that they know are going to die, that they know are going to die in brutal fashion by the lack of military support from the United States. And they would still champion this as a policy, despite it costing them nothing and it costing the Afghani people everything. I hate that shit. So when, so I'm, I'm, suffice to say, pulling out was dumb. Pulling out made the lives of the Afghani people worse, right? The, the Taliban was not democratically elected. Um, Ghani was democratically elected. He might, he's got his own quibbles with corruption issues, whatever. But 
it's easier to deal with like a corrupt politician than a terrorist group. And the Taliban are a terrorist group. And we just let a terrorist group take over a country. Fanatic says, I'm, I'm going to, I think you're just the only one I'm interested in Fanatic. You say going to war with an ideology is stupid. We have gone to war with ideologies and we've won. World War II was not a war against Germany and it was not a war against Japan. It was a war against fascism, right? It was very much a war to transition fascist governments in these places that had wrought so much terror and evil in the world and transform them into productive, uh, uh, enterprising liberal democracies. Like that was the goal. That's what we were there for. Um, and that's what good people should be there for. They should be there for that in Afghanistan too. We are at war with an ideology and that ideology is terrorism. We should be at war with terrorism. Uh, terrorism should be uprooted everywhere it is for the good of all mankind. Okay, there you go. That's that's my response. For the good of all mankind. I, I kind of like that ending. That was actually pretty inspiring. Uh, let's go to our friend Doobie. I actually um, agree with almost everything LSP said, but for different reasons. Uh, I think it is kind of silly to say that, you know, we couldn't have won this war. It just seemed like we were uh, halfway in from the start, right? We wanted to uh, do this in a way that seemed PR friendly, where we made it seem like the Afghans had some control over their country and had some, you know, uh, autonomy. It just seems to me like we should have taken control from the start. We shouldn't have allowed them to put in a government of Afghanis until we decided they were ready at, at, at a point that we determined that was the case, right? We We should have totally eliminated any potential for corruption by just putting our people in charge until we were comfortable with allowing them some modicum of support. We, we should have made Afghanistan a colony, basically, right? Um, and you and in that kind of situation, you can absolutely train people out of an ideology. We've done it before, right? It's not impossible. Um, so that being said, uh, given that we did pull out, unfortunately, um, obviously not the best way to do it. And I, at this point, I don't think we have any responsibility to these people. So I wouldn't say, hey, we should go back in or, or you know, we should send them money or whatever. You know, they don't, a lot of them don't even want these human rights we're trying to give them. Um, this is a very backwards country, backwards people, uh, very uneducated, mouth-breathing pieces of shit. So, like, I don't really give a fuck, you know, if the Taliban comes in and tells them the girl, little girls can't go to school. That's their culture. They want that. That's on them, honestly. I don't know if they want that. Absolutely. I really don't I out. really don't know right. if, I really don't know if they want that. And I don't know if we should be like saying that these people e even though they may not want it don't deserve human rights. Um there were deserve according people, to who? There were, there were plenty I'm sorry. <laughs> deserve according to who? So if if they don't want their well, little girls to go to, to school. According to the Constitution United States, want, it's a right well, to They're not the United people. States. Hold well, on. They're 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 according States. according to going to go around the world. Oh, no, you're going to go around the world rights. giving giving uh, the rights of the U.S. Constitution to random ass people in other countries? What are you talking well, according about? According to the Constitution, there are rights that are given to all people, and there are rights that were given by a power above the government. They're given to American citizens. Right. No, there there are are it's it's the U.S. Constitution. It's not the, the world Constitution. It's the U.S. Constitution, not the world Constitution. There is a U.S. That, but there... <laughs> uh, human rights. You don't get it. <laughs> Those do exist. It's fine. Do be. Sure. No, the, US, the UN human rights are not the same as the U.S. Constitution. Like and reciting the Constitution, well, something the United States, 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 States truly, if the United States truly believe, if the United States truly believes that these rights were given to a by a power that is above the government itself, then it would have to truly believe the rest of humankind has these. Individual yeah, the, the, the United rights. States become like a crusader nation rights. that just goes around uh, imposing our for the sake of women not getting stoned. Like, yeah, so people can have a basic right to an education. Fuck yeah. Wait, okay, so you're you're because basically these, advocating these... for the United States to go to war, world with I'm sorry, go to go to war with the like uh, Middle East and all of Africa for like yeah. indefinitely middle... and until, China. until they until they agree with us. Basically. Yeah, go to war with terrorism. Actually, like yeah. the, oh, no, the terrorism. Anyway, these aren't these terrorism people. to you it seems to be just things that, that conflict with the U.S. Constitution. No, like, there are plenty of there are plenty of Western terrorism countries that don't have free speech the way that we do. Do we go to war with them? You, are you not? Are you seriously denying the Taliban are a terrorist group? That's not what I'm saying. Right? Okay, then but I would ask you. What I ask you if you think it's reasonable that. for the United States to go around uh, enforcing our Constitution on other countries, saying, "Hey." You're violating the Constitution good. of the United States. So, We're going to go to war with you until you start following our Constitution. No, I don't think. I think the Constitution is a dumb fuck argument. I, I think it's a dumb fuck document. But universal, we we are sign, a signatory on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And yeah, if terror groups are impeding people's access to those rights, we should go to war with those people. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. Because it doesn't what allow. Makes... 
Why should because we spend doesn't... our resources, our people's lives to for some other country? Like for like do, do we, what, their what, what, hold on, I'm just real quick. A question, Afghan. What makes terrorism and the human rights violation special to let's say nation states that commit human rights violations? China, for example. Why why is terrorism I, special I that this, we should fight that? I would apply this to China, China too. Yeah, I think yeah. if we had we should ability, go to war with China. If China didn't have nuclear weapons, yeah, I think I think the Xinjiang genocide is uh, plenty of justification for that. I'm sorry, do you not? So you're saying anyone I, anyone that we currently have nation. the financial capacity to to yeah, to if win, we can win, right? if we can what win, what about Canada? I have to ask the question. So, so do you think <laughs> <right>? so, <laughs> slave camps and genocide? So you think we should go to then yes? So, so I think we should go to war. Good. I didn't. Okay, so I didn't realize you were this much. We got we got a lot of crosstalk. All right, so Scott, give it a try. Yeah, so you think we should go to war in the Congo? Um, if they're like, if where, where there are warlords <laughs> running around? Yeah, like, if there are warlords, well, I don't know what you mean. Right? The REF in Sierra Leone who are gone, the RPF of Rwanda that currently right? rule the state. Which which ones are you talking about? Okay, I, I promise I you, I'm averse to all of these Rwanda conflicts. In, in, in the, I'm, I'm, I don't know why we would be in Rwanda specifically. They're liberalizing, like. I don't understand the point of that. I I'm saying the Congo, like the Republic of Congo, and they lost right? the genocide in the Congo <laughs> because they lost the genocide in the Congo. Like I could see all sorts of reasons you would okay. intervene. Okay, so yes. so every because every nation state, every, So you're saying every nation state that we practically have the capacity, you would bomb innocents, you would create terrorists, you would murder people, and you would violate human rights in the name of protecting human rights because they're not as good as America at it. No, yeah, every you, nation you state me. we're in control I, I would just of. Behead all of them, dude. I would behead every every, every nation civilian. state we're in control don't, don't of. Don't get don't get like actually answer the question. Like, are you actually? Well, he's saying, strong like, manning my position. Of course, I'm not well, going to make like, it clear. Yeah, 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 your position clear. clear. Uh, do you guys sincerely think I want to go in and bomb innocent people when I'm talking about this? Yes. Okay. How, well, how else would you do it? Think about genocide the innocent. How else would you do it? Okay. No, I'm asking. I'm asking you. Sure. I collateral damage. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to just like lay out your position clearly. Yeah, my position is that anywhere where there is some group of people terrorizing another group of people, such as through massacres, through genocides, or through control of the government where they effectively run a terrorist state, that it, if the United States has the ability to topple these people, we should make it our duty to do so. And we should um, do this while preserving as much human rights as possible, minimizing as much collateral damage as possible, minimizing as much catastrophe as possible, because we're trying to improve the situation. So we're going to go to uh, right. Corey. And that uh, makes you a genocidal maniac. Corey, yeah, Lastoid, and Sprout, okay? Uh, yeah, so it, it seems like you uh, are taking a special issue with, with terrorism specifically, or rather, like, wherever there is terrorism, if I'm, if I'm understanding your argument. Well, not just terror. Like, it applies to dictatorships, too. Uh, okay, so terrorism, dictatorships, um, and, like, sure, there's, there's technically a definition for terrorism, although I would say it's probably not the best definition, but, like, so... Are you going with some sort of official definition of like what constitutes terrorism uh, uh, based act, off of your criteria? Act, act, randomized, like, acts of, randomized acts of violence that are designed to target and maximize civilian damage. That's terrorism. Uh, okay. Yeah, are you that, a supporter that, that of Black Lives of, Matter? I was just about to go there. Black Thank you, Fabian. Matter. I was just going to go there. Sand, are, you, are you a supporter of Black Lives Matter? Yeah. No justice, no peace. Okay. Oh, so, so by your, by your okay. own definition, do you think Antifa and other organizations that are in support of BLM should be physically fighting and, and killing police whenever they see them? No. Why not? Why am I against, like, Antifa killing police officers? Why, well, I mean, yeah. like, if you're a supporter yes. of BLM, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. you oh, think yeah, that yeah. police officer, I don't is think using police systemic are, violence sorry, against I don't, yeah, I don't think police people officers are terrorizing People, okay, so there's, there's a certain massive. like percentage of it. So, so now there's a qualifier. Yeah, there's a certain of how percentage of it that we try to address via law, and that we ah, have a system. So, what's to the deal percentage? With. If we had what? a legal system of dealing with terrorism, I'd go. I'd pursue that. They're terrorists. What's what's the percentage of terrorism? You're dying right? on a hill. Oh, that needs your definition. Like ten. What? I don't know what the fuck. What LSP, hell am I LSP, on? LSP, you're dying how on much violence does, does it have to be? How many, let's go to how, many, uh, how much violence does it have to be? Let's go to, yeah, this let's is go like to the dumbest fucking interrogation. Lactoid and then Sprouticus. So when we're talking about like where is the line, like how terrible does the government have to be before we get involved? I think everybody has a line. I think what LSP is saying is not unreasonable, right? Like even if there was no like circumstances about Pearl Harbor or if you know Nazi Germany and stuff, if if America found out about the Holocaust and we could militarily intervene. 
I think most people would agree that we should do it, right? If we find out, yeah, they're, they're literally genociding like Jews over there. Like, yeah, I would be in favor. Send the troops. Stop that. You can't do that. And, you know, because we can win, right? If we can win, we should take steps to, like, prevent horrible things from happening. I, you know, if we could win in China, I don't disagree. Like, maybe it would be worth it. I mean, that'd be like, a, like an actual analysis. We'd like measure, like, what could the damage be compared to what could the potential benefits be? But everybody does this in any, any kind of like geopolitical analysis, right? We all do this, you know, I think everyone here would do this when it comes to like Nazi Germany or like Japan. And to Doobie's point with Japan and Nazi Germany, we did change them dramatically by fully occupying their country with a military government. We didn't give them control right away, right? Uh, you know, we, we, we really led them out of uh, a really dangerous uh, area spot that that country, those countries were in. So yeah, I, real, I think real it, quick, could, real it quick, could be lactoid, Real quick, Lactoid, uh, the American people didn't want to go to war, and you already brought up the Pearl Harbor incident, so you know exactly all of the, uh, the reasons why we kind of tried to force Americans to want to go into war, and, and yet we still couldn't. We had to just conscript. And furthermore, we did ally ourselves with a horrible fascistic ideology, the Soviets. Okay, hold on. So this is a rel so you made one good point. You made you made one good point, and I would agree. I would agree that like our wars against communism uh, were good in similar ways, right? Because toppling the Soviet Empire was like a good thing, right? Ending the control that, that government had. Now, I we you know, we can look back, and what I'm doing is I'm doing a counterfactual here, right? If we knew the Holocaust was happening, I think most people alive today would say. Yeah, we should probably go in militarily and stop that. Fabian, let's say you lived in America in like 1943 or, or no, sorry, 1941. OK, and they we're discussing like, you know, what's going on. And then evidence comes out. Yeah, they're literally putting Jews in gas, like in fucking gas chambers. Would you say, well, we better stop that? Or would you say not our problem? That happened. I think the problem. No, but say, the problem. No, I, but the problem is, in like these things are not comparable. When you start talking about something like like immediate, like a pre immediate danger, immediate like killing and stomping and murdering and all those kinds of things, I think that's not the same thing as an ideology, um, a, a pacified or or passive ideological bent that like causes people to be in a situation where eventually, uh, you know, people are just going to be like a. Um, where they're just going to be oppressed, where it's like, uh, for example, when um, when we were past slavery, but when we were in Jim Crow in the Jim Crow South, like that, that wouldn't be an excuse for Russia to come bomb the U.S. That wouldn't make sense. Or do you feel like that would be like that's I, a I, there's a difference? I, I think it has to be to, to be to a sufficient scale. I think slavery was enough of a justification for the Union to invade the South. Yeah, but that's why I didn't mention slavery. That's why I mentioned specifically like. But they weren't know, being Jim genocided. They weren't being killed or gen well, maybe Jim Crow doesn't. Well, women are being threshold. genocided now. That's not what's happening there. But there is these things where, like, yes, the women are not being able to get whatever. Um, and I would the re and and, and the, the, uh, the the reason why I would compare it to Jim Crow South and things like that is because, like, similarly, you know, when there was a march on you know on Pettit Bridge and there was all that violence, it's the same thing that you're describing. It sounds like these women are asking for their rights and they're asking to be equals or whatever. And there's all of this violence associated with it. That's why that's different than slavery. That's why you would be. I would I would say it's more analogous because it's like it's not about like some like immediate like uh you know physical brutal like brutalization that's happening in that kind of way it's more so about like an ideological bent that's causing some sort of long-term oppression that's why these things are better or better analogy so then i would ask do you feel like we had an excuse to invade the um that, that i mean that russia had an excuse to invade during the jim crow south would you say that that was enough if they could do it with minimal casualties sure you okay, can never so how many like, so, so let's, this is, let's get a, let's you're, get a what's your, what's your engagement so okay so first. we're not arguing about whether we should have I'll gone the question into, later we're not arguing whether we should have gone into afghanistan this isn't the argument the that what we're debating isn't should we go into all these other countries and take these countries over and then change change their country that's this is not the debate the debate is whether or not we should have left afghanistan we already had control of afghanistan we were in control of Afghanistan. There, there's no doubt or question about that. We were in control of Afghanistan. Uh, and yes, if we are in control, we should we should prove to provide the human rights that we believe are inalienable, individual, and given above the government. So if we are in control, we should give those rights to those people and ensure those people keep those rights after we leave. It shouldn't be this fucking hard. And I don't know why LSD is dying on a hill. He doesn't have to die on. LSD. Go to go to the fact go to the fact that we had control over Afghanistan. 
Whether or not we should have gone into Afghanistan, that's a different question. The question is, should we have left Afghanistan? My answer is we left prematurely, and it is the it is the answer that uh, Biden's generals said in front of Congress that we left prematurely. Um, it is the answer anyone you talk to uh, but, has any, but that, any military the, that, expertise that we left prematurely. That control that you're talking about came, it was a Pyrrhic victory, though, because when you start looking at the death toll on U.S. citizens, right, like on, on freaking our soldiers, people like that that are dying for our country in that scenario. Yeah, I don't think then you can just go ahead and say, eh, you know, it's kind of worth it. You know, it's whatever. There's 7000 people died. 7000 people. Like that, That's 7000 lives lost for fighting an ideology that we never won. We didn't win it then. We had no. Let me talk about invading Afghanistan. Let me finish. Then talk. Let me finish. Let me finish. Shut your mouth. Debate the point. When we're shut up. When we're talking about like all of those lives lost, and you're comparing this thing, and it seems like there was no end in sight. It wasn't like there was something that was changing that was causing us to get to the point where we were going to finally get to a point where we were going to stamp that ideology out. It wasn't going anywhere. That was That's something that's irrevocable. That's like that's tied to the religion in some 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 ways. It's tied to those people. We weren't going to ever win that. So it sounds like you, to argue in favor of it is arguing in favor of like an, an, an indefinite or an infinite war, an infinite war that we can never win because we never did win it. And all of that time, and we weren't going to win it eventually. It was never going to happen. And we're not just winning. And, and only counting the U.S. deaths is really unfair because I'm pretty sure the amount of casualties that were happening there that were non like military, not non people involved, um, that that was absolutely atrocious as well. So you have to calculate both of those things. And it's absolutely disgusting to just say we, we don't know. We don't we don't know how many people died due to the war. It's difficult to figure out like famine and it's difficult to figure out like economic situations. But we know it's somewhere to 200 to 400 thousand people. So somewhere between like a quarter and close to half a million people were dead because of and that. Again, and we know that between the war in Afghanistan, Afghanistan we're, and, and we know, right, but this is Should we have cost. stayed in Afghanistan? That's not the question. Is it invading Afghanistan? What you and Fanatic want to be just so sit down big about? Quiet. No, no. Just sit down so and be you quiet. want to you sit and talk about this. invading Afghanistan? You're, you're literally should we have stayed in Afghanistan? If you want to talk about should we have stayed in Afghanistan, that's fine. Let's talk about the actual topic. This is the continued cost of the war. This didn't all happen the day we invaded, right. and then everything right. was fucking hunky years. dory, you're right? In there 20 years. And in you're the twenty years, you're including deaths from year are, one. Yes, should we have stayed I'm in Afghanistan the entire fucking war? We had Sproutus. control in twenty twenty. Shut the fuck up, you brain. How many US? How many US people died in twenty twenty? The reason okay. you can't pick between the left and the right is because you're not smart enough to think what either of them think. Listen really? to me for yeah. just a so moment. I'm just showing how stupid you are one because literally you're taking deaths from year one. In 2020, we had full control of Afghanistan. There's how many no deaths? denying that. How many U.S. How many U.S. deaths? How many deaths in, in 2020? 2020, we had 11 deaths. In 2021, in oh, that we pulled out. We had 13 deaths because of the bombing that happened at the airport. Okay. Can so, we not have 11 and 13 deaths unless you're had, only yes, counting these, U.S. These, deaths? This is, this is unless, per. You, he shut asked the for fuck US up. Deaths. He asked for U.S. No, deaths. No, so I didn't ask for U.S. deaths. Okay, I did. No, That's listen fair. to me. Listen yeah. to me. Listen to me. The idea, if you want, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You cannot talk about human rights violations of the people living in a country and then all of a sudden only care about what happened to American soldiers and contractors over there. Either you're talking about the human rights violations and what happens in the fucking horrors of war, or you're not talking about it and you're only talking about the financial cost to Americans. Now pick one, because if we want to talk about the financial cost to Americans, we can talk about how the war in Iraq and Afghanistan cost us 1.9 trillion fucking dollars in 2020 we had control of afghanistan we should have maintained control until we were sure that when we left that there was going to be a government that could withstand holding up itself holding itself up that way we could ensure that the citizens of afghanistan had god had their god-given rights and we're going to keep their god-given rights as okay, much Spartacus. as we could be sure of it when did, we first gain, wait, 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 when did we first gain control? When did we first gain control? We gained, when did that we mean? first gain control? I, I would, I would personally say we first gained control somewhere like 2014 is when we first gained what I would consider control. Okay, so from the time that we had control until 2020, can you give me the list for us so I can do the death count myself? I want to know what that number uh, is. From 2014 to 2020, yeah. uh, this is including UK. Uh, 
one sixteen. Give me one second. Uh, 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 just 33. put it in chat. Just put it like in chat. Oh, okay. oh someone uh, did. Was it Spaniard that linked this? It's always Spaniard. Of course, he linked it for me. I got it. Thank you. Um, uh, so 2014, we had 54 deaths. 2015, we had 22. 2016, we had nine. 2017, 80, we had 14, 189. 189 since 2014, and okay. not including 2022. So, if, so you're saying with total control, we had 189 deaths over seven years? Yes. That's not that okay. bad. I just want to let you know. It's right not now, that bad. We're talking about 189 wanna, people dying. I don't know what you... I just, for I'm control just, of a country? I just want to let you know right now, Stratasys... No, I am not sick. going to forget this, and if I ever see you wearing a memorial bracelet for a fallen soldier, I'm going to burn the shit out of you wait, because of your pro-war wait, wait, fucking wait, stances. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. We already had control of Afghanistan. There were generals that said we left prematurely. Are you saying that these generals can't can't mourn their comrades? Is that what you're saying? That these generals no, can't I'm saying mourn if their I comrades see because you, they said that I'm we saying left prematurely? I'm saying if I see you you're a fucking mourning idiot, a fucking Scott. comrade with a, a, with a memorial idiot. bracelet, I'm okay. going to call you out for your pro-war so, bullshit. Bullshit, um, because it's you and your ilk that want to send people to fight. I, 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 so I take I take a um a, an anti-war stance. Like I am very skeptical of American imperialism. However, I would like to uh, look at our friends LSP's point. Um and uh, you know like I guess a steel man, right? Look at it in the best light. Um. So uh, he has. I feel like he's been pretty clear about the criteria that he's laying out. Um, for countries where we can have a, a certain victory, um, then and they are uh, committing a certain level of human rights violation, uh, then we should intervene. We should not intercede there. Um, so in those countries, right, that we, we have a military superiority to, then we can uh, invade and uh, achieve victory in a relatively short amount of time. Now that like that's the uh, military victory, but then yeah. after that, there's holding the country, which is a different thing, right? Um, which always oh, is you know a bloody affair. But still, if we can do that, and if we just spent our treasure, we actually spent our treasure uh, going around this uh, to the world. For let's let's say like the we pick on the weakest nations. Right? Let's just start there. The weakest nations that just happen to be doing these things. Um, like the amount of human suffering that we could end overall, uh, might might be worth it. Uh, like if we if uh, let's say um, well you can do, uh, imagine human suffering. I guess I don't have to go down and give you examples of uh, the terrible things humans can do, right? Um, but if these countries are doing uh, significantly terrible things and we are helping these people out, right? Like yes, there will be deaths. Absolutely, there will be deaths. But they're going to be deaths any which way. Um, uh, maybe. Uh, 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 possibly more deaths in, in a t certain time span due to uh, whatever the fuck they're doing, right? Um, so if we can, um, uh, for a relatively minimum cost, right, to the American people, then why not? Uh, yeah, if I if I can borrow, oh, a why not? So for we'll go to Corey. We'll go to Corey. Then we'll go to LSP. Uh, if I can borrow a, a phrase from Scott, uh, it's like with with that scenario, you, you're engaging in probability, as far as I can tell. As in, like you you can. Uh, like I'm not a general, uh, and I have like no no military experience whatsoever. But I, I don't see how you can ever sort of like guarantee minimal casualties or that victory will be assured. Um, and that it, it, it as far as I can tell, it's like it's pretty much always a gamble. I, I think I think we're I think we saw some evidence or seeing some evidence of that uh, with Russia and Ukraine, where I think I think the sentiment was like Russia thought it would be pretty much like you know uh, a done deal. Uh, turns out it's not as easy as they would have thought. And I think we even I think we even saw this play out with Afghanistan of like, sure, technically there was there was victory, uh, but no one I don't think anyone I'm, I'm a lot I'm old enough to be alive when the invasion in Iraq first started happening, uh, where like it was never foreseen that it would last this long and it would take this much uh, and still pretty much fall short. And it seems like Sprouticus would have been OK. Uh, of like if it took like 20 years, 30 years, 50 years with like control of Af Afghanistan, uh, like would that have been like OK with you, Sprouticus, out of curiosity? Yes, we should have controlled Afghanistan until we knew that Afghanistan can govern itself. Yes. Uh, but then I like I think to Scott's point that there is a cost like there's a cost to that. Thing. I don't think you can ignore not a human. Co in addition to the human cost, there's also, I think, a clear financial cost. Not that that matters more. But I think you are also largely ignoring a human cost that's not taken into account. Yeah, we invaded Afghanistan. Yeah, if we already had, we invaded, we had control. 
we should have maintained control until we were positive that when we left, the Afghanistan government wasn't going to fall in several months. Like all the U.S. generals said, they knew it was going to fall in several yeah, months. Yeah, you got a good point, Sprague, because I didn't said, think about oh, that. Oh, fuck you guys. The, 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 the government's yeah. going to fall in a couple months. But that you sounds know what? so have crazy. Fun. I can't believe we did that. But again, so we had control for seven years, and it didn't seem like we were getting to that point. How many more years do you expect it would have taken us before we got to the point where you, we would know for sure that the Taliban was going to give up and that we were they, that they wouldn't come back and resurge and take over? I don't know how many, how many years. I don't know how many years. I'm not going to put a guess on it. I don't know okay. how many years. So not if, one. More than one I, year. More than two. Obviously. Do, do you think it would have been possibly more than ten? Uh, probably, yeah. Okay, so at this point now, you're expecting this war that's been going on for 20 years, and you're saying that you think it should go on for an additional 10. So you'd say increase the war like by, by 50% of the total time of the war um, for a thing that we might be able to do. No, that you don't might. even know what happened. We're already in control. It's no, already oh, happened. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying what We're I'm saying. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Smarty. Smarter, Smarter Kiss. What I was saying is what, what I'm saying we might be able to do is we might be able to actually stamp out the ideology. That's what I was talking about. So like you're I saying said, you, 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 you don't know. Oh, so you're saying for sure in 10 more years, 100% the ideology no, 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 of the no, Taliban. I didn't say leave in 10 years. Well, how, well, how long? However long it takes. Oh, okay. All right. We're... Awesome. <laughs> you got me. You got me. I'm out. <laughs> that's going to that's however, much, however, much, however much theft and violence uh, is necessary. How many LSP, rights violations are needed you know, for the, for the good of democracy. Fucking gross. You're a fucking idiot, Scott. Alice Bay, speak. Sorry, I had my, my mic muted. It seems very clear from Fanatic's response that they, they don't really have a good answer for why we shouldn't stay indefinitely if costs were permitted. So let, let's we're not going bankrupt from occupying Afghanistan. Uh, and we didn't go bankrupt when we were an ally to Afghanistan. Um, and the odds of us, it, like, if we started, like, losing some serious money there, where uh, arguably it would make our circumstances worse, then I might say, you know, that's when you stop supporting them. But while we are there, and I reject your argument, well, Fanatic, you're just wrong. One-fifteenth of the national Please debt. Please shut the fuck up. Um, Fanatic, you're just wrong. Um, things did get better. Like in that seven-year occupation phase, when things were best was when you had a reformist president in Hamid Karzai. And Wait, strong... when did I ever say things didn't get better? Those words never came out of my mouth. I'm sorry, did, did he not say we were there no. for seven years and things didn't seem to improve? No, that's, so, those words okay, never so came you, out of my mouth. No, so not you, even close. Okay, then so you do think things improved with us being there? Well, what I'm saying, no. The thing, the thing that I said is that okay, it didn't can seem you just like... Answer I, my question? So, so I don't know if things improved or not, but how, how are you measuring that? What are you referring to specifically? Uh, okay, so I'll, then I'll just explain. It doesn't matter. Okay, I never said that. Um, so my, I want to make sure okay, that it was crystal so, clear since you tried to make sure... Nobody cares, cares. Nobody cares. Let me just get to the point. Jesus, fuck. Okay, all right. So you're making a whole point based off of something that I said and you don't even understand what I said. Go ahead. Go ahead with your stupidity. Your stupid drivel. You idiot. You done crying? Think your stupid piece. Holy okay, shit! Okay, okay. Uh, you're such an idiot. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I just, want, I just want to hear. I just want to hear what LSP has to say. LSP. Firstly, fanatic needs a bottle. Um, no. So uh, the point doesn't even matter. It it things did get better when we were there. When we had a reformist president in Hamid Karzai and a strong military presence, because the United States was off, able to offer something that Afghanistan doesn't have without us there, which is like a third party to to mediate, uh, and that's a big deal because Afghanistan has been war torn country for generations now, uh, with severe ethnic and religious and tribal conflict uh, between the various different peoples of Afghanistan. And there is no mutual cooperation or trust, which is a little bit how the, how the Taliban was able to take control so easily. So things are measurably worse by leaving there. And if saying even longer, presuming costs permit, um, keeps people's lives and situations better, I don't see any good reason why we shouldn't. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, Doobie, and then I'll uh, look back. Um, so again, I find myself agreeing with LSP, but for like different reasons. Uh, I think Afghanistan has a ton of natural resources that we could tap into. Um, and it makes sense, I think, you know, long, to have a long-term strategy where you're building up another nation in the Middle East that can be a strong ally. Right? Like, I see no reason that we should have like pulled out, surrendered this country to terrorists, basically, as he said. And, and like, what do we gain for 20 years of effort? Fucking nothing. We walk away with our, our tail between our legs for because what? Because it's not politically like uh, uh, popular anymore. Like that seems silly. Right? Um, so, yeah, I, I agree with LSP. Seems like there was no good reason to pull out. And it seems like the issue with it being like a 20 year war and, you know, us not making a whole lot of headway um, is that we should have gone further. 
should should gone much further. Um, like I said earlier, I don't think it made any sense to turn over any kind of control to the Afghani government, given how corrupt they were um, right at the start, right? Or or even 10 years or 15 years in. I think we should have made sure that the, that the place is stable, made sure they had the infrastructure to sustain themselves. And then maybe, possibly, we give them like some small modicum of control, possibly, right? Um, and then we see how they deal with it. Um, but it, it, again, it seems like the reason um, this was a failure is because the U.S. has kind of lost its way in terms of like, uh, we're much more PR aware in the way that we do war, right? It seems like we're much more concerned about what the public is going to think. Now, we don't want to be seen as imperialists or conquerors, et cetera. But I think sometimes it's beneficial to the world to be that, right? And I think this might have been one of those cases. Um, there was a specific turn uh, in the U.S. actually becoming more PR aware. I mean, Vietnam was part of it. Uh, but yeah, there was a specific turn where we actually really did start thinking more about what the public thought. About these things, I think also mass media might have something to do with that. But uh, well, thank you. Can I can I ask a question? All right, ask a question, then we'll go to Lactoid. Well, I want to ask. A question no, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can ask the question; it's going to answer. But yeah, we'll go to Lactoid. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, do Do you think that maybe that attitude, that 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 sudden need to be very conscientious to cater to people who don't know what they are talking about when it comes to these conflicts, like becoming more conscientious about how we look to idiots? Do you think maybe that might have resulted in some people's lives being worse off? That it might have resulted in us making choices Absolutely. that we wouldn't otherwise have to make? I mean, we have a, we have a media that would, that would take and sensationalize every time a drone accidentally killed some kid, right? While, while killing some terrorist group or, or like a yeah. group of terrorists. They would take that and sensationalize it, turn the public against the U.S. Oh, God, the U.S. is just over there making children fear the skies. Oh, God, it's so terrible. But they don't tell you about all the little kids who can go to school now. Been able to go to school for a decade or two decades because the United States has been there making sure or, they can do it. Or to, to offer an extension, the little kids that are saved from going to the market. You know, exactly. Because uh, there's not a terrorist that's going to bomb them anymore because we blew them the fuck up. Like, yeah, but, sometimes people are going to die in war. But overall, this improves the situation for most people there. Yeah, so it right. seems like the primary so, issue. Are you there, you guys? Fuck with the politician care. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I, 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 I'm wait, wait, not. Because I do want to get freedom. back to it because we're going to go to. Can, uh, can I get this a real quick clarifying question? Because Very it quick seems clarifying something. question, please. Yeah. We gotta, um, like, do either of you like believe in democracy or at all? Like I, I don't because I believe in freedom. But do you guys believe in democracy at all? Uh, to a limited extent, right? I am very uh, dem dem democrat. Dem what's the word I'm for? Democracy Democratically skeptical. skeptical. Yeah. Democratically yeah. skeptical. Yeah. However, right? I do think that democracy is a far better institution than what they have in place in fucking Afghanistan. Now, what they had in place before. Well, we got there. It seems like neither but of I you think, believe in American but I think, democracy. But I think that I think that our cult, that uh, the culture that exists there, was not ready for that yet. And so I think we had to mold them to be ready for it, and we didn't. No, no I mean America. Right. Because both of you were saying that, like, the people were just too stupid and the will of the people might have been the problem. Right? Yeah, as so, I said. Okay, well, no, no, no hang I, on. Can we not be straw, man? What I said was that catering to stupid people who don't know anything about what they're talking about has made some people's situations worse off. Do you disagree with that? That we well, make yeah, PR I'm against, conscious I'm against moves that make results in worse outcomes for people. Yeah, uh, again, I'm, I'm against democracy. I'm just, I just want you guys both okay, to admit you that you're on the other end. Question? I, I literally just did twice. No, you didn't. You said a total. I just said purpose. yes Let twice, me, and that I'm against democracy. Question. Okay. Do you disagree that the U.S. making more uh, PR conscious decisions and how it conducts foreign policy has resulted in more damage because now we have to cater to people who don't know anything? Do you disagree with that statement? For the third time, no. I'm against democracy. Okay. I just, I it's just, I just wanted you guys to both admit. And you're too much of a pussy, and you're pivoting away to admit you that you similarly don't believe position, in democracy. Okay. I believe in democracy quite a lot. I think I think democracy has not unlimited, except, democracy. except when it doesn't go your way. And I don't think I don't think yeah, the place of like uh, dem the democratic like uh, I don't think the place of like democratic decisions is like war, right? I, that's probably not a place where you should be looking to the public. So let's go to a uh, lactoid. Uh, before then, Iko, yeah. if you can hear me, uh, turn off your camera in Discord, and we have a link in the uh, the group DM. Uh, the stream you're at link, click that, uh, and then you can, that's how you'll be on camera. Uh, go ahead, uh, Black Twin, please. So two quick points. Um, I think people scoffed a little bit when Doobie brought up, like, natural resources. You know, in the global fight against, like, the communism, like, in China and Russia, like, having access to st like, geostrategic resources could be, like, incredibly important. I don't think that's necessarily a point that justifies the war, but, it, you know, it's definitely a point in favor of not leaving, um, a serious point in favor of not leaving. I mean, there's a lot there. 
Um, and then Corey, when you said before that it is a, you know, we don't know for sure if it's going to turn out, it's a probability every time. I, I agree with that. And I think this is why like the decision to engage militarily, like should be something that we, we take very, we don't take lightly, but there has been also been times that it's worked out, right? It worked out really well in South Korea. It worked out really well, um, you know, in, in Taiwan and Japan and Germany, right? When we got involved and we, we stopped horrible things from happening, right? So, you know, or in Kosovo, right? I mean, more, we're looking for a more recent example, right? Like there are situations in which we can yeah. get involved and that we can stop like something horrible from happening or we can improve the situation for the, not only the people there, but the world in total. Like it, so do you, would you agree that, because where my position is, is that, yeah, war can be justified as long as like the benefits are overwhelmingly like above the uh, the cost, right? I'm not sure Afghanistan well, perceived, was that. Perceived benefits, perceived There's, costs. No, predict, predict clarification. Benefits. It worked out but well for you, South Korea. <laughs> Good Korea. It worked, it worked out, out well for Korea. <laughs> well, no, it worked out great. Well, hold on. So what, 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 what our actions there prevented the whole peninsula from being North Korea, right? It saved however many millions of people that live in the South, live in the South right now and are currently yeah, flourishing under capitalism. Yeah, I just want to out well for South, not There's necessarily for Korea. Korea. Right. Why, 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 do, why do I care what happened? Like, why do I care what works out good for, like, communists? Like, these are horrible yeah, people. I, I, I just want to point out something really horrible people. People. No, like, I, I think Lactoid actually brought You're up something really, uh, really relevant. Like the idea that we can't uh, go into a place with an embedded ideology and then force it to change, right? Force it to adopt something that's more falling to us. Japan is one of the best examples of this. Yes. We basically killed their fucking God, right? When we, when we uh, took over there, right? And we shifted their entire uh, government, their entire culture in, into a direction that, that favored the West more, right? We could absolutely do this. Yeah, so um, that's that's I, a, that's, I, that's a just a terrible reading of history. First of all, Japan had been had been westernizing for a long time. Okay, their culture was already on the brink, and the, World War II is obviously you know obviously they weren't all the way there, or they wouldn't have been the fucking crazies that they were. But the idea that they're in the same similar vein as like the Middle East is today. Or that they're somehow like that they were like similarly ready or not prepared for it is just not true. And second of all, like it took fucking atomic bombs to get to pull that off, right? Like it wasn't like it was just like a small matter. I, I don't think anybody's uh, suggesting that it was a small matter or that it was easy. I'm suggesting that with the right uh, commitment, with the right uh, will atomic to sacrifice, bomb to do what needs to be done. <laughs> with enough today, bombs. You, can, with enough you bombs. can shift an ideology. And yes, maybe more people die today because people are going to be really upset that you're shifting away from their, their fucking fundamentalist Muslim uh, culture. But overall, long term, people are better off. So, yeah, I, so you say I, I you need to, atomic commitment. That's fine. I you know, as long as you just were willing to bomb another place to that. I don't that, think it would have been necessary in Afghanistan, yeah. obviously. But hey, maybe I some don't. Other, I don't. Uh, I don't know how it couldn't be. Harsh You've measures. Seen, to, when you to see snuff out years, the, the extremists in the fucking desert would have been used. Yeah. When we commit twenty years to something and we have control of something for seven years, and, 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 and so thirteen years of commitment, seven years of com I'm sorry, twenty years of commitment, seven years of control, and we're still not even close to it. I don't know what the freak you're talking about. I think any person with an active brain recognizes we were never going to get them to the point where they were going to just completely abandon their ideology. This was never going to happen. We never were going to be able to do this. It was completely impossible. Which is if seven years of control from the greatest country in the freaking world doesn't demonstrate that nothing will for you. We weren't going to get control of that we were just doing something we we're on a fool's mission it was never going to be accomplished which is why we needed to pull out so we I, were accomplishing I, something I, I getting sierra industries and halliburton I, rich i i i previously so i had someone uh else who was going to join this panel unfortunately didn't end up uh jumping in but i know th uh their uh, stance on that because we've argued about it a bunch of goddamn goddamn times but um uh the idea because we've been talking about the length right but yeah uh, they're saying this other person would say, uh, is commit generations, literally generations of time to uh, Afghanistan. That, like, um, uh, because of you know the U.S. being in the financial position that it is, um, and um, uh, we could put ourselves in a military position that has a very tiny footprint, like uh, the U.S. You know, giving air support to the army, basically the what we were doing previously, like just before we pulled out, um, that kind of setup where we had like minimum amount of troops there, and we're just uh doing more air support, which is why we had those incredibly low numbers of deaths. 
Uh, so doing that literally for generations. And the idea is like, well, how do we win this? How do we change this ideology? Well, it has to be that uh, this generation has to die. And maybe the next generation has to die. But then the third generation, those uh, people will, will have grown into it. They have been um, not quite Americanized, but like um, uh, uh, Westernized with whatever uh, culture ends up being there. Um, and then, yeah, you can change it. Um, yeah, Prime it's Prime it's a possibility. Prime Cuss, if LSP and Doobie want to lose some weight and go join the fucking Kurds and go fucking kill people, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's good, but be my fucking guest. But don't right, advocate right, right. to steal fucking money from me and steal money from the chi from my children's fucking mouths so that you can go off and bomb people while meanwhile, the government is also fucking funding these goddamn wars to begin with and is sending hundreds of fucking millions of dollars. And this time, we promise this rebel group will be moderate and over throw this dictator we promise nothing fucking bad will happen this time no fuck off you're talking about bombing people and then talking about like some consequentialist analysis that three generations from now it might be better off fuck all yeah of i know i know long-term thinking is difficult for you but yeah sometimes you need to make an investment in the future yeah and so cats are aside, known for setting aside a little tax money time preference. from your pocket from your children's pockets to make the world a safer place for them and for future generations i think is a good thing uh, yeah. Let's go to uh, Corey and then Aiko. Uh, yeah, just a sh small point. Um, of so, so Doobie, you you brought up Japan, and and I I largely agree with Scott's point of like you know it took bombs, and you I think you're bringing up Japan, framing it as like that's a, a success story. Like, um, I would reframe it as I think that's a testament to how difficult it is to change a culture. Uh, because there are many aspects of Japanese culture. I, I think it's fair to say. Despite all of that, Japanese culture is still quite distinct from American culture. And sure, they have westernized. Hey, marriage is still illegal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, where it's like there's there's been economic reforms, but in terms of the culture, uh, like there's there are still very many things that have been culturally ingrained that are still pervasive that are still playing out today. And that despite all of those efforts, uh, like the culture is still very much there. And so. Uh, I think I don't think Japan really speaks was, to your point as goal, much as you think it does. Was the goal to kill Japanese culture? Like, no, to kill like all of it and like literally transplant um, like the uh, culture of Idaho to Japan? I don't think that was. I would choose the culture of Idaho personally. Yeah, it's amazing. Right? Like as it stands, what? What's wrong with? No, nah, well, they have a lot of issues with pedophilia and shit, but yeah, it's, well, it's so better than it used to be. Okay. Um, well, so does Afghanistan. Not in the, not so in the does, same way. Yeah, Afghanistan does too. Yeah. But yeah, so, like a lot so worse. Right. Um, I, I, I guess we can argue about the nukes if you want to. I think they're totally justified. I think it was a totally uh, acceptable thing to do at the time. Um, we can get into that if you'd really like to. Um, but yeah, I think as Prime kind of tended to, the, the goal wasn't to turn Afghanistan into Idaho. It was to soften their culture, to mold their culture into a direction that was more favorable to the United States. It made them more, less warlike, less likely to invade people, less imperialistic. And it seems to have succeeded. I mean, that was, bomb was just by every, by every Japan by every measurable standard it succeeded. Right. Look at them now. And even on the subject of uh, no, like, but you can't win that on the missile. You can do. I mean, it was like all of the occupation afterwards. And again, they were already like super duper westernizing. You can't just like you literally tie no, those you, things. Uh, to those, no, no, to you can't. Myself. You can't. You can't do a timeline analysis and say that because something is better now that that justifies murder and genocide or 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 certain military actions because you don't have anything to compare it to. All you have to compare it to is what it was before. What you don't have another universe where the bombs weren't dropped to compare it to. So it's the idea to say that something is successful. No, but, but the Scott, idea to say- Scott, how can you make no, any kind of prediction about history at all that. then? How, how do you make, you make, history, make policy any? ever? You can't, I'm just saying that you can't say you, that if we hadn't dropped the bombs, right? That, 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 that the world would be worse off than it is now, just because you're able to look at what is, what has occurred in our current timeline. Right, you're not actually comparing it to a world where the bot where the second yeah, bomb, for well, example, like, wasn't like, wait, 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 Scott, okay. we, we we do these comparisons all the time, right? Like, if we take this analysis where we can't we can't like predict whether or not a policy or an action led to good results because we don't have the counterfactual that never existing, right? It leads to just ridiculous outcomes. Like, do we know that we did a good thing by like it, you know liberating the, the different concentration camps? Well, we don't know what would happen if we just would have left them alone. So I guess we can't say we did a good thing. Like, no, like we went there and killed people and we stopped them from killing more people. That was a good thing, right? Yeah, that, that's just that's just illogical to say that you can look at a, a historical timeline of of 
70 years and say, see, it was a good thing because where they are today is better than where they were 70 years ago because you don't know what the world would have looked like if we hadn't dropped the second bomb. Okay, it's so a predictive trajectory. So I think what uh, I think you what, can uh, guess Scott and you can use say, evidence to try and get to I, a good guess, I, I think, but like you don't know. Scott, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I think the difference between what you're trying to say is that like to what he's talking about, looking at a very specific action, right? Like liberating the uh, concentration camps, right? But then uh, Scott is uh, countering saying that, well, you're not just looking at that. You're looking at um, a whole series of events that sprout from that. Like we're so far uh, removed from these events, right? Removed from World War II. Um, that saying that not dropping the bombs, um, like that would have spawned a, a, so many other consequences, right? Like maybe us literally having to invade the island, uh, which, which would have been very, a bl very bloody affair, you know, and how that go with the American people have had the uh, stomach for that, all these things. And then on top of everything else that happens <laughs> in, in decades afterwards, so he's saying that you can't, that at that point, the counterfactual becomes impossible to make. Am I incorrect, so, uh, Scott or Scott? Am I correct or incorrect in your... I mean, I, technically, I, I would make a, a further point, but that's perfectly good enough for so, this. But with that, no, wait, 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 hold on. That that, with that thought process, that wasn't what I was disagreeing with. Simply... Okay, sorry, hold on. Let's get let's get uh, Lactoid to get okay. that, and then um, yeah. yeah. So, I, so Prime, with all due respect, I don't think I don't think that was that's what the disagreement was, right? What I'm saying is historical actions, whether they be like a more specific thing, like liberating a, a specific concentration camp or liberating a whole bunch of concentration camps or invading a country and conquering them or dropping a bomb or all these different historical things, right? Like, yeah, I, I guess I don't know for a fact if we did if we did none of them, what the world would look like. We have to do a predictive trajectory about, do we think this will lead to like a long-term good? Now, is it true that we never know for sure whether or not any action, like, is it possible that like by nuking Japan that actually would like, in, like send a shockwave that would in, like alert alien satellite? I, I don't know. There could be like some, I don't know fucking know, right? We, we really don't know. But at the end of the day, we make a predictive analysis. Like, will we save more lives by, you know, sending the troops in and like, liberating Auschwitz? I, I think that every reasonable person based on the evidence would say, I guess we don't know for sure, but we probably will save more lives and it will, will kill some people. No, no. Yeah. What, you're, what you just did is explain in a really long fashion that every reasonable person must be a consequentialist. Would you, and that you, don't, wait, you don't engage in morality of right and wrong based off mm, of the action itself? Scott, would if... If I'm not, did, I'm not sure you answer this question. If you lived in 1941, would you be in favor of invading Germany to specifically liberate the Jews? Um, I would be in favor in mercenary forces and giving donations to those things. I wouldn't so no. be in favor of taxation from the state. Um, okay, okay. And you what, 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 fight that war. No. What if, what if all the predictive power indicated that the only way we could save six million Jews is if we send in the troops, like government troops? Would you be in favor? I'll, I'll make this even easier for you. Um, it is wrong to steal a penny to save the world. Wow. I mean, I, I feel like that. <laughs> Sorry, let's go to Ico. Um, uh, do you think that's <laughs> I would just There's no the pennies in Canada, penny. by the way. I might that do it. a really important <laughs> penny. Uh -huh. I might do it, but theft is wrong, regardless. Ico. So this reminds me, that, that last comment reminds me of a quote that's often attributed to Ayn Rand, but she probably didn't actually say it, but I think it's something that she would have said. And somebody, uh, in, according to the story, once asked her uh, if, if it was legal, if somebody owned the sun, would they have the right to turn it off? And in this apocryphal story, she said, yes, they, they would. Um, so I think that's, I think that's uh, sort of akin to what, what we just heard from wow. Fabian. But let me just say... Um, I I don't think that dropping the bomb is analogous to the situation because it, we've dropped the bomb with regards to Afghanistan, right? That was the initial invasion. We came in and that was a successful invasion. What went wrong was immediately after the invasion, trying to, to you know deal with insurgencies is the problem that we had in Afghanistan. And that's not equivalent to dropping the bomb. It's equivalent of the decades after in Japan where we stayed and tried to you know change their society. Now, I even think that ha has problems because Japan was uh, a top-down society, right? I think, as Doobie said, we killed their god. There's no equivalent to that in Afghanistan, right? They're tribal culture. They're decentralized. Taliban was everywhere. Uh, you, so you could kill any given tribal leader and just another tribe would spring up or that particular tribe would just have another leader. It wouldn't, 
it wouldn't have the same effect. And so to that degree, I don't think you can uh, justify going into Afghanistan and doing regime change on the basis that it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, analogous to what happened in Germany I, or in Japan. Can I? Yeah, but well, hold on. Let me, let, let, let me just finish this real quick because I've got this. This has this is a thread. So that means I'm I was against uh, going in. I wasn't necessarily I was OK with going in and destroying the training camps and any, you know, trying to find bin Laden and all of that. Had we not gone into Afghan uh, to Iraq, we might have gotten Afghanistan at Tora Bora or we might have gotten Osama bin Laden at Tora Bora. Uh, I think things would have gotten uh, uh, handled a lot better and faster if we hadn't gone into Iraq. And if in Afghanistan, we did not seek regime change, but came in, did our business and left like we did in the first Gulf War, we would have been in a better situation. However, uh, uh, Colin Powell had something called the Pottery Barn Rule. I don't know if any of you remember that, where he says, look, you know, the Pottery Barn Rule is you break it, you've bought it. So if you go in and you overthrow the government and you institute a new one, even if it's through free and fair elections, uh, which is I think it's dubious to say whether or not the ones in Afghanistan were free and fair. Um, but if you once you've done all of that, you have an obligation, according to Powell, to to stay. There's really uh, there's really you can't justify going in and making all that uh, all that kind of change, and then just jetting it out of there as if you're not responsible. Uh, John McCain put a time frame on it. He said we had to stay a hundred years. We've seen 20 years is is not enough, which is precisely what I think John McCain would have said. He would have thought that to the degree that you can compare this to Germany and Japan, uh, you, you would need a lot more than just 20 years to get it done. I think that's like what Prime said about having needing to have three generations. That's, you know, not quite 100 years, but it's the same kind of idea. Um, and then you have, so so at any rate, what I'm saying is, I don't think we should have gone in. I don't think, at least not for regime change in the way that we did. Uh, but once we did, uh, I think it's uh, it's it's difficult to say that we can just get out of there and absolve ourselves of all responsibility for what happened when 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 we fucked things up to begin with. Oscar, you had a direct response to him. It was like to one specific part, and he went on for a long time. But I guess I'll just like respond generally. Um, so he, on the point that like we could use the emperor in Japan, uh, we had to use the emperor to transition to in Japan, and Afghanistan is absolutely transitionable in the same fashion. They have revered tribal leaders, they have religious leaders, um, and being in Afghanistan lets us build those connections. Uh, we can serve community needs, and we can transform that society by tapping into those resources. Japan had. Sorry, right, I was going to steal menu. We got to the point in Afghanistan to where the locals would come to the U.S. military before going to the Afghanistani cops. Um, we, we got that to happened that in point. Iraq, too. So, like, it, to say that we, for one, to argue we didn't have sustainable control is insane. And for two, to argue that we shouldn't have kept that sustainable control until the several generations it might take for the country to change and for it to be somewhat westernized uh, to where they retain those human rights, right? Then I would argue, yes, stay the couple, stay the couple of generations, uh, just like we did with South Korea. The last person that died in South Korea because of a military combatant uh, was 1969, and we've maintained South Korea since 1969 to present, um, and no intention of leaving South Korea. Uh, so I, I think it's perfectly reasonable to say that we had. We had sustainable control of Afghanistan, and we should have maintained that sustainable control of Afghanistan until we were sure that Afghanistan could hold up itself. So, uh, Sproticus, so I, I would, you believe you, can, you believe I that it's Sproticus okay thing that to violate DB? Okay, um, you believe that it's okay to violate um, rights, to murder people, to occasionally murder innocent people, and things like that, so long as the outcome is is better for a, a much larger group of people, right? No, I, I'm not pro, I was, I'm not pro invading Afghanistan and staying in Afghanistan, but we already had sustainable control. Okay. So let me, let me reframe it. All right. I mean, to be fair, to steal man you as best possible. You're okay with the United States government occasionally violating people's rights, occasionally killing people and things like that in what you may deem as like some form of police action because it's better than pulling out. Terrorists. Yes. 
especially when they're okay. going to, especially when they're going to overrun right, but, much but more human rights and will kill be killed, much right? more people, when, especially when they're going to overrun much more human rights and kill much more people than our sustainable control ever would. So are you willing to denounce your Christian faith now since you don't believe no. in thou shalt not kill? I do believe, I do believe in thou shalt not murder, which is actually what it is. Um, killing is thou actually, shalt not murder. Kill, killing is actually different than murder and military action has never been, um, gone against by the Bible. So I'm curious of when so you think military action think, has gone against by the think, Bible. So you think bombing innocent people or acceptable civilian casualties is not murder? When did I say I was going to bomb innocent people? When you said that you were going to support keeping fucking Bagram and keeping people control? in. So, okay. So you're for sustainable control that will never, ever, ever bomb to make yeah, sure that we don't I, accidentally I, kill I anybody. Honestly, I honestly don't think we needed to bomb at that point in time. And 20, especially in 2020, we didn't need to bomb. We had sustainable okay. control. The military we had in Afghanistan was practically in control of Afghanistan. Well, hold on. Uh, in 2020, we had a, a a treaty with the Taliban that said okay, that. Okay, let's go. That, that, let's go. Let's go back to 2019 if you want to. We can, well, yeah, I mean, I'd we much rather go to 2019. Yeah. So you would keep. Wait, I stated that we had to say. Americans. Wait, wait. Yeah. Can you not listen? Do you not know what wait means? Thank you. I said we've had sustainable control since 2014. So I mean, if you want to go back all the way to 2014, that's fine. I've said we've had sustainable control since 2014. So you would cripple. Why would you cripple American soldiers and make it to where their capacity to fight is so severely crippled that they can't accidentally ever kill an innocent person? How would they even be able to maintain that control if they can't ever kill an innocent civilian? Or do you believe that it's okay in your Christian faith to occasionally accidentally kill innocent people because you want control over a region because it's better for them? So the first time you mentioned it as like, uh, bombing innocence is in like intentionally. Right, where you um, said you don't, you would get rid of all the bombs. The second, the second time you're talking about accidentally killing innocents. And yes, there's going to be casualties. There's casualties here in the United States to think that innocents don't die in the United States because of stupid shit. Then you're dumb. Um, and the police kill innocents all the time. It, even stray bullets kill innocents. So if you're going to go down this road, then you're against any type of action to keep any type of civilian protected because any type of action to keep civilians protected is going to result with innocents that die. I'm an, I'm an anarchist, so yeah, I don't support stealing money from me to to have police forces. That's that not even close to the same let's argument. Go, wait, wait, so e even even an anarchist though, you would have to accept like if there's this idea of like there's no acceptable minimum threshold of like civilian casualties. You know, I, I'm a I'm a it's concealed carry. About, it's not about. Real quick, no, I'm listen. a concealed carry permit holder, and I'm like shooting at somebody mm -hmm. coming running at me with a knife, and I miss. Like it, it's happened, I'm sure, where like you miss the person and you kill someone like behind him. Like, am I not now, like, now do we have to, like, disarm the American population? Well, no, because what you're talking about is an act of aggression. What Sprouticus is talking about is actively going to another country to maintain control in the name of making things better. And so the when consequences say, of going to another country, we were already in that country. We already had sustainable okay. control. Well, okay. Well, you're going to, you're going to move troops there. Occasionally people are going to deploy, people are going to go home. Supplies are going to be brought in. The, the maintenance is still in action, right? Like neutral gen exists, right? So what you're talking, like when you say I'm for the, as if we're not already there, you are actively, yeah, but you are actively sending troops there, the, sending the, resources the, there, the United maintaining States not actively it. going into Afghanistan by bringing troops home. Oh, sorry, sorry. Troops uh, there. That's not there's actively no, going into no Afghanistan. Right. No you are making, that. I'll make it very quick. I'll make it very quick. You are making oh a conscious God. decision to maintain a presence elsewhere for the for the for the benefit of those people the presumed the presumed consequentialist benefit of those people that will indeed lead to death of people you are making you are you are choosing to violate people's rights and to occasionally murder people and you call yourself a christian like, yes. The answer is Y. -E These two are not synonymous. Okay. I, okay. So I got Y E S. Thank you I, very much. I, I got to move on. So hold on. We got a doobie. And then fanatic. You want to go afterwards? Sure. God, I'm super curious um, about the thing you laid out earlier with the the penny and the world thing. And actually, what you just said right now to to sprout is really interesting. Um, and I, I mm -hmm. feel like I feel like people in chat are not grasping like how interesting this is. So I want to make sure that I'm understanding you correctly. So, like, if you were faced with, like, the trolley problem, right? You have, like, a trolley going toward five people on tracks. You could pull a lever mm -hmm. and it goes to, to one dude on the other side. You would just mm -hmm. let the five people die over and over and over again. I don't think they'd pull the lever, but I'll let I'd Scott. I mean, I'd, 
I'd, I'd, I'd approach it as approach it as a virtue ethicist and do everything I could to stop the train. I wouldn't pull the lever. No, I'd let, I'd, I would let five people die yeah, versus so, pulling the lever to intentionally murder another person. And you would do that. Like, so even if there's like, there's no other way for you to solve this, this trolley, you need to pull the, le the lever or the, these, this, these five people are going to die. Like you would just let them die over rather than like take an action there that you think might be like yeah. hurting another person. Or I don't people. think you understand That's... Scott's framework. Well, I, I like, do. Uh, I, I didn't think, I didn't think it was that extreme. That's the issue. Oh, well, not like, so, like uh, if I, I, if I understand. I how many times, how many like, times, that prediction. how many times in a Piagetian scenario do you do this? Because the problem with the trolley cart problem, right, is that it's isolated in tempore, right? Like you're given one decision to test the limits of your moral belief system. But the issue is, is that when you reiterate that over and over and over again, you have a society that advocates for murder on a regular basis based off of consequences of whether or not it's okay to murder one versus, uh, versus being passive or doing something else to try and stop the murder of five. Right. So when you isolate it, it sounds real bad because it's like, why wouldn't you pull the lever so that five people can be saved and one person is murdered? You know, just bite the bullet and murder one person. But when you reiterate that over and over again, you have a society that constantly accepts can and I, says it's okay to murder people. Okay, so that's, I, I think you're playing like fast and loose with murder as a term. But like, if this is your idea of murder, like a state killing people who, uh, who if they didn't die would result in five more deaths. Um, then yeah, I, if that's like a necessary evil in yeah. this world, which is usually going to apply to terrorists, it's not in a vacuum is the problem. Like trolley problems happen every day, right? You have to make these decisions every day because there are people exactly. that you don't you have to kill choose five more the hard bodies decision. on the line. You have to choose the hard decision to be a moral people and not pull the lever and look for the solutions that eventually lead You're us right. to peace I don't think instead of war and genocide over, and over and over and over again. We should let the Nazis do what the Nazis were going to do. You're absolutely right, Fabian. You know, we should um, just stand it back yeah. and just let them do whatever the fuck they're going to do. No, I, I don't think they attacked us. Oh, they attacked us. Right. You can Wait, I got a, I got a quick question for Smarticus. Hey, Smarticus, real quick. Like, would you, would you say that if you, um, if we were, so if we knew that like it was going to be a 20 death count every single time, I mean, every single year for the next, you know, for, for every year that we occupied like um, Afghanistan, and you wanted to occupy it for the next 80 years, right? Because that's how long it was going to take us until they were, we were finally able to stamp out the ideology and, and get whatever the freak we needed, right? Would you be comfortable with that? Would you say that the 1,600 U.S. soldiers that we know will die over that period of time, would you say that that's just justified for our end goal? First off, the deaths would go down. Um, the longer we'd stay, the deaths would go down. So the fact that it would be 20 per year is absolutely ridiculous. It's not even a, a thinkable hypothetical. Um, but yes, I would be okay with staying there with the limited amount of deaths, um, compared to the amount of deaths that would happen underneath the Taliban, um, the amount of, the amount of human rights that would be stripped away underneath the Taliban. Yes, I would be okay with staying there until we've fixed Afghanistan because we owe it to them because we invaded their country. Yes. Okay. I, I just think uh, for, for some of us, I think the idea of just like taking on this idea that we have to police the rest of the world, we have to make them like, uh, like uh, make them align with our ideology. And if that costs us 1600 lives, that means that 1600 families who are going to know the sting of a death, um, specifically because we felt that we were going to change an ideology. I think that's absurd to most I, Americans. I think it's grotesque. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't I, think military yeah. members sign I, that contract I, I, knowing that they risk their, they, make they sure risking their I, lives. You don't uh, think people, you yeah, don't think military members know that they're risking their lives to try and to try and liberate people? You you, you don't think that's understood by military members? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I don't we talk, we talk, we talk about all the time that every I military don't. member, every military member signs a blank check that the government can cash in for how much ever they want to, up yeah. and including the individual's life. Yeah, this it's not. Nice. I don't know. I, memorial I, bracelet. It's really crazy to like to be able to sit here and kind of refer to people's lives as just a check being cashed in. But I don't know. It's just a. I don't know. Maybe it's your youth, or I don't know what the hell this kind of ignorance is. But it's something that you're uh, able to do. I'm just not able to engage with it. Uh, Dooby, Dooby, Dooby. I want you to be a little tired. Yeah, but you're not I'm sacrificing sure yourself. I, you're not sacrificing yourself. You're sacrificing other people. You sicko. I'm not I, sacrificing other people. Yeah, you are. What okay. the fuck do you? Okay. Want? Everyone okay. else can oh, see okay. that. Okay. Fucking argument. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. What the fuck is your fucking argument, fanatic? Are you bored? I just made it. I, my argument was exposing the disgusting nature of your idea 
of your North wanton, disparaging, and disgraceful sacrifice okay. of other lives. That's what my point was. Okay. It's okay. sickening and disgusting okay. and depraved, okay. you actual okay. sick, okay. demented okay. sicko. Okay. Don't okay. talk to me, you actual oh, imbecile. Whoa. You're okay. beneath me, you Holy disgusting shit, creep. Shut, shut up. Everyone, shut up. Thank you. Great. Fuck. This is what happens I when I, I, I try to be like you know, nice. Like, hey, let me let me not curse everyone. Uh, now I gotta tell people to shut the fuck up. Like, it, it's it's the effective thing. Um, Duby. Fanatic based your... arc. Duby, uh, do finish your point, and then we'll go to Ico and Bactoid. Um, yeah. So I I don't think we're gonna re Scott um like at all. Uh, I think I think you're doing kind of an ideologue right now. Um, but that's okay. Well, that's why I love you. Well, I... I, I want to add. What? I want to add to this. Oh, Is Dubi done? I mean, because Scott, like, it's, it's true, right? That the uh, trolley problem is a scenario presented, tepat uh, waktu, right? So we, so if we would like extend that out uh, further, yeah, it is true. We would end up in a society where, yes, this society believes that if you can, uh, if you can save five people by killing one person, you know. Um, we're going to end up in that, in that society if you, if you kind of extend this this problem yeah. in this island thing. Of course, yeah. But I think you I think society that ends. But up it, but on the other end, constantly. on the other end, if you uh, hold on. But on the other end, if you uh, don't accept that you might need to violate uh, maybe like moral norms, quote unquote, right? You might need to do something bad for 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 the greater good now and then, right? Um, which I think the United States and plenty of other countries, plenty of people, good people, have had to do uh, across history. Right, um, greater you know, good. It's you just you just end up you just end up making a victim evil. of yourself, right? Like should should no, uh, the United be... States? So for, for, no, please. So for example, if Germany uh, in in the the Axis powers right had just like not touched the United States, had had managed to conquer Europe, managed to, to uh, solidify their power there, had actually started striking up deals with Mexico to to invade the United States, up to the point where they actually fucking invade the country, we don't get to do anything to prevent this. Like oh, there's no, there's nothing ridiculous. No, there's there's nothing wrong, right, with like Halliburton, for example, being hired to defend people um, based off of bank loans, right? There, there's nothing wrong with someone saying, "Hey, look, we're being attacked. We need help," and then a group voluntarily choosing to go defend other people that are that are that are hiring their resources because they're being violently attacked. What is wrong is the American government trying to orchestrate and, and make Pearl Harbor worse to try and convince us to support World War II and then conscripting people to fight in a war that they may or may not believe in so that, their, so that their sons can die in war that they didn't even fucking sign up for in the name of the greater good. And the fact of the matter is, is that a whole number of things might have occurred if America wasn't involved in World War II. Maybe, maybe the fucking Nazis and the fucking Soviets duked it out for so long after Europe was crushed that we never had to worry about the reign of communism and China would be a liberal democracy to this day and so would North Korea. You don't know what would have happened. What I'm saying is, is that some things are unjustifiable. And murder is one of those things. Aggression is unjustifiable. And so I say that they're wrong. But what I wanted to say is that we're, we're, we're having this weird thing where we're, we're having this conversation in a vacuum where we presume the state, we presume the United States government to be this like good faith actor in the Middle East. And I think that is an absurd lens to look at given all of the things that have occurred, given the fact that to this day, we are still having the Pentagon after Trump said that the CIA couldn't do it. They just went behind his back and the Pentagon did it or sorry, DOD, um, you know, is, is paying large corporations hundreds of millions of dollars to, to, to send, um, you know, Eastern European weapons to conflict one zones, wherever that may be, so that we can over and over and over again, continuously destabilize this region. And the idea, and like the idea that like the American government was in Afghanistan is like this benevolent fucking dictator that was actually stabilizing the region is already a false narrative. Of I what know, we but we're going further than that, this entire time. We're, we're going, we're going further than that though. Right. So I can agree with you that there are a lot of fuck ups in how the Afghanistan situation was handled. Right. For, for lots of reasons. If, they, if it was I, just I stupidity, is, sometimes I think the what mistakes is, would happen in our favor. But I think what Sproudicus and LSP are proposing is that sometimes, right, not just in Afghanistan, but in other situations too, across the planet, 
there are cases where uh, people are being oppressed, uh, people are being hurt, murdered, whatever, by, by, by actors within the region that are totally disconnected from us and don't affect us in any way. Right, where it it is our like moral responsibility to come in because we have the ability to and say, hey, you don't get to kill those people, you don't get to enslave those people anymore, right? We're going to stop you because we have the ability to stop you because we think what you're doing is wrong, right? Nice. And it seems like you're saying, hey, you would just allow the slave trade, you would allow you know the rape and murder, all this stuff because hey, it's it's somewhere else. No, I'm saying you don't you don't fix things by violating rights. If you did, then Libya wouldn't have fucking open slave markets right now. You don't know what your actions are going to do. You're presuming that because bad you think things the North are happening, have invaded the can, South. Can I, like I do, I think like the the United in the United States are in the Civil War. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think the North should have invaded the South. No. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess we, I guess we can't say you know we would have been better off without slavery. I guess. So we're, we're, we'll, we'll go to Ico, it's not what I'm toy, saying at all. Uh, I just Corey think you don't understand some war history. LSP. We don't have that um, counterfactual. So. But like, I wanted we yeah, don't have the counterfactual. Yeah, we might okay. have been better off I, if you know. We I'm gonna, to that. So, uh, Scott, I'm going to ask you a, a question, which I know I shouldn't. Ask. Um, and I need you to just answer in ten seconds because we got we got a, like a whole bunch of people. We got go ahead. I'll, I'll be quick and I'll back up. It's fine. Sure, sure. Um, in uh. A Call of Duty game, uh, which I barely played, uh, but I think it was like Advanced Warfare. Um, they had a uh, a PMC, a private military contractor, uh, which had gotten so big uh, that it it had like a military capabilities like a uh, rival superpower. Um, would mm -hmm. you be in favor of something like that, or, or not necessarily in favor, but fine with private military contracts uh, popping up? Maybe one of them becoming that powerful. They're not the state. Um, pushing for an, an army, but a PMC that anyone could hire. I, I, I'll just say that, like, I don't see any, like, you, I don't think you can violate someone's rights. I mean, that's the issue. I don't care. Like, if a PMC has fucking nuclear weapons, what the fuck do I care? How's it any different than China having nukes? Thank you. That, that's all I wanted. Thank you so much. All right, uh, let's go to Ico, uh, Lactoid, uh, uh, Corey, then uh, LSP. Uh, yeah, so, um, the, of course, the problem with consequentialism uh at least for me is not the the idea of looking at consequences it's the ism part of it it's the idea that consequences always trump everything else all the time and so to steel man uh you know uh, fabian's answer to the trolley problems the problem i have with the trolley problem is that if you think you have an easy answer to it, then you're probably not thinking about it enough. And I think, so this is why I want to steal man Fabian's side of it, because if we were to look at it as something other than the trolley, because the trolley is designed to sort of make us uncomfortable uh, about losing the five lives. But there are real world uh, scenarios where we have to make these choices. Like imagine if uh, there's a, 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 you know, a healthy person at a hospital where there are five different people who all need various different organs, right? Would it be okay to kill that person, take all that person's mm -hmm. organs in order to save the five lives? I think when you ask that question, you suddenly, you intuit uh, sort of your, your inductive reasoning takes you to a very different place than it typically takes us when it comes to the trolley problem. Yet there's no reason for it to be considered all that different of a problem. And this is a... Mm -hmm. This yep. is a problem that the Catholic Church had, talks about all the time. Catholic Church uh, continually talks about the difference between uh, uh, active and passive sins, right? That if you do something actively, that can be a problem. But if you, if by inaction you don't do it, it can be less of a problem. And they make those distinctions within the moral theology, right, of the church. And that makes me think that that's where it has something to do with why uh, Fabian talks a lot about positive and negative rights, because if you're going to assert this thing, you can't really acknowledge positive rights, because then by inaction, you're hurting people's rights. And it's so yeah, much Yeah, I don't believe easier. in positive rights. Uh, right. If you Positive rights in, are just made up bullshit. Right. If you disbelieve in positive rights, then it's way easier to hold that position, because then you can just do nothing, and it's always moral to just do nothing. And I, But what I'm saying is that the organ example sort of... I think makes it uh, more intuitively obvious why someone with Fabian's uh, uh, outlook uh, would give the answer that he does to the trolley problem. Exactly. I'm not sure. I mean, some to some extent it is. I'm not sure it's actually that. Uh, you, you don't have to frame it in terms of like a trolley problem because in the trolley problem you're you're pulling the lever and then your intent. I mean, arguably you had no choice, but like you are intending on the other person to die in in, in some way or another. 
I, I almost think war is almost kind of closer to like, um, we all agree with like self-defense, but what if it's like defense of others, right? So if someone's running at me, trying to get me, I think we all kind of, we can all can agree like, yeah, I can just, I can shoot him, right? He's coming at me, right? Kyle Ritten hero, right? When he shot the guy attacking him, clearly justified, right? But oh, let's God. say, but let's say, no but let's say Kyle Ritten hero wasn't had being charged at directly. Let's say there was some woman running on the street and like a guy with like the same crazy, you know, rapist guy was chasing after her instead. And then Kyle like took the shot and killed the, like the, the guy attacking the, the other woman. We would all agree that like Kyle was justified there. Yeah, and, and, and and like on like uh, right, he's justified. And like on if we take this kind of like microcosm, this microcosm to me kind of seems like Afghanistan, right? You the Taliban, maybe they're not coming after us, right, or me or you, but like they're running after these Afghan women trying to enslave them, and like we come in and say no, you can't do that, right? We defend them, like in the same way that you know I, I would shoot somebody to like defend my wife or children, like unless unless we're gonna make the argument that like a mayor like. My wife and children have like intrinsically more valuable than some Afghan woman, which I don't think any of us are going to make. Um, I want, I want to be so, so the problem, the problem you here, kill, the problem with the written as a, hero you can kill as an act of self-defense in defense of others. Um, so right. especially in the commission of a felony, you can kill in defense of others. If you have a reasonable belief that someone is going to sustain, well, not all uh, sustain death or sustain great bodily harm um, if left alone. So, so the problem, that, so lactoid, the problem that you have here is kind of, it is some, in some ways similar to the trolley problem, but it's not a direct parallel, right? Is that what you did is you took something that is clear and present danger that is like in tempori, right? And then what you did is you use that as a justification over time for war. And those two are not the same thing. So when Kyle Rittenhouse in this example, right, uh, sees someone in clear and present danger in their vicinity and acts to stop the 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 murderer or what 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 have you, right, the child rapist, and says, you know, I'm going to kill this child rapist that's trying to kill this woman right here, right? Like he is doing a good thing in stopping something that is active. But what you're talking about is engaging in an operation that we know is going to is is not no longer a clear and present situation but saying these people are being oppressed these people are being killed in general we're going to look at them as as a, as a nation as an as a group of people as an ethnicity whatever it may be we're going to commit to a war that necessarily requires tons of acts of aggression in order right. to do so well so i can change the hypothetical right so let's say like Kyle Ritten hero, hero hears about like there's an army of pedophiles, right? All of them like you know this pedophile that attacked him, like he's their hero, he's their god. So you have an army of pedophiles, and they're all marching slowly towards the kindergarten, right? And they're like miles away, but they're marching towards the kindergarten, and we know they're going to get there at some point. He calls the police. You know they don't. You know they don't want police. Don't want to piss off the Democrats, so they don't. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to come and like save the day. And then Kyle says, right. you know what? Cops aren't going to save save him. No one else is going to save them. I have to go defend the kindergartners from the army of pedophiles. Do you think he's wrong for doing that? I think he's justified in going to like shoot the pedophiles. He's, for the he's, as a 17 year old, so, so, as a 17 year old, do you think Kyle Whitenhouse, bro. that would make sense for a 17 year old kid to make Rin that hero. decision? Rin hero. Yes. So, no, I thought it was so, Kyle Whitenhouse. So again, Lactoid. I already made this distinction yeah, earlier so. when talking about voluntary <laughs> situations where people ask for help in violent situations from voluntary associations, right? So it's Kyle still killing though. No, 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 no. Kyle Rittenhouse. It, yeah, I don't give a fuck if it's killing. Like, I'm not anti-violence. I'm not a pacifist. I'm against acts of aggression, right? So what you're talking about, again, is now an invading army. People ask for help. And the individual says, I will go help these other people voluntarily to stop this act of aggression. Right. That is allowed. What you're talking about is using the United States government that An steals actor. money and resources from other people in order to support a war. And then that engaged war necessarily comes with all of these other things okay. that the United States government does. We'll, we'll, we'll change the hypothetical. Drone bombing hey, innocence. We'll change the hypothetical again, right? Let's say Kyle, he written hero, he hears about the mm -hmm. army of pedophiles. He doesn't have enough money to like buy a gun. He just doesn't have, mm -hmm. and no one will give him a gun. If he goes and like steals a gun and then goes and like defends the kindergarten from the army of pedophiles, I still think that would be justified. Wouldn't you? No, he stole. The, the stealing is unjustified. But he saved like 80 million kindergartners from the army of pedophiles. That's good. Well, so you're also ignoring I mean, it's a great damage. gun, like, but. 
how would how would your calculus change if you know some of those he's, he's got those children high, are going to die? He's got those high capacity magazines. Um, look, I mean, look, yeah, by going there with a gun, there is like a risk, I suppose. Okay, of, like, can we can we just like, can, can we say it's like it's wrong to steal, but so and I'll acknowledge that it's less wrong than not stealing and allowing those children to be invaded by the the army of pedophile. Yeah. Uh, right, and, but but we're not talking about stealing a gun, just for the record, right? Like you're talking about a much like you, you, can he, can he, can we you want to use your World War II example? Can he conscript people? Can he take a gun and say I'm going to fucking shoot you if you don't help me kill the army of pedophiles? And then they go, I guess I'll grab my gun and I'll go save themselves from the army of pedophiles. Meanwhile, Kyle Rittenhouse is also funding the army of pedophiles through other government organizations. Like, let's make it a little bit more realistic to what the American empire really is like in these countries. Sure. So if Kyle, the, the, the funding of the pedophiles would be horrible and definitely beneath Kyle Britton here. Okay. For sure. Right. But like, I, I don't know. Conscription's I, I, not, I, I don't, I don't think conscription is necessarily, uh, like bad if it's if it's necessary if the only alternative is like we're now going to live under like the pedophile empire and like we we, we have to stop yeah. them now right yeah and even if like even if like out of every five pedophiles like or even if like maybe i have to like on the army there's like 10 pedophiles and there's like one innocent person who's marching with them because whatever pedophiles. right uh even if like there's a chance that like you miss and hit one of the innocent people or like it's still like right. justified so, to go and defend and, and, like, the would children. It, would it really you, be wrong? No, like you, if they're, if they're like, if there's like a, a couple of Scots on the side of the kindergarten in the name watching the, 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 the kindergartners be raped by pedophiles, would it be wrong to point a gun at that Scott and be like, hey, you crazy sick fuck, watching these children being raped in the fucking kindergarten, you need a fucking help or I'm going to shoot you. Like, would that really be so wrong? Like, I, I don't, I guess yeah, you're violating absolutely. his rights, but yeah, but absolutely. I think it's justified in that case to violate his rights. So it's not justified. So, so, okay. so my, cal my, the, the, look, my calculus here, and I, the reason why I think there's some disagreement is because I fundamentally, aggression. I fundamentally agree with like consent being the critical element here and I'm against aggression and all that. I do view it in, in like at least a little bit of a consequentialist lens here of like, yeah, if you can minimize aggression and coercion and consent violations and violence and rape, and you can minimize this with like a little bit less in the end, like we're living in a society that has less coercion. We're like living in a like a more like a, in a society right. so in a system that has test, more liberty. Let's test your limits. So, uh, let's uh, test your uh, limits, we, right? Uh, so you've already we stated. We, hold on, hold on. Real quick, I'll be quick. It's you've already be stated, super quick because we got two other people. All right, so, all right, I'll be super quick. You already said that you're pro-slavery in the name of the greater good. So my question is: Is how many black people would you round up to pick cotton to stop the army of pedophiles? What's the number? There's, I mean, it depends how large the army of pedophile is. There's some number, like if it's a direct correlation between. Got like, it. Got yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Got in the it. same, in the same right. way that, like, yeah, when you force people, when conscription is slavery for sure. Jury duty, jury duty is a form of slavery, really. When you think about Indeed. it, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. All, the, all right. taxes are slavery. And every ta every tax right. ever is a slavery. I agree okay. with you. Oh, you need so some slave. You need some slavery in society. Out. Black you do. Black <laughs> All black of Can we clip yeah. that? I need some slavery in society. Uh, it's just I true. I give you permission. Jesus. I give you permission to uh, sign me up for your cotton picking uh, anti pedophile. You chose the right clothes today, Lactoid. The right uh, clothes. Yeah. Oh my Saints God. Out. <laughs> it, it's a uh, really living cotton up. pedophile. The clothes. Let's go to Corey, Prime, and Prime, then, well, at least make sure that you're one of the indoor ones. It can't be totally. Fine. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, can yeah, I just yeah, say yeah, really yeah. quickly that I think it's I'm absolutely agree. disgusting for y'all to be sitting here joking and making these like idea like slavery isn't that big a deal. And when you guys start comparing it to like actual like problems or I mean to problems that are like not nearly as severe, that is absolutely abhorrent. Because I think that that's absolutely There's slavery all over the fucking planet think, right now. Sure, I think I'm okay with using way, the military think, to do something about it. You're okay, not. I you got know. you. I think in the same way when you guys were sitting there. Um, like just talking about like like how like it doesn't matter if there's 1600 deaths like, you know it's just a check we got to cash i feel like you guys are all in this same like sick demented twist uh to a twitch um white conversation world where you guys get to just say complete nonsense like that's absolutely ridiculous everyone can it, sit here and not a, as a, as a black the only one not justifying slavery along there, with you i want i want to get into the black count the black conversation right so given that there are many 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 uh I'm black not entertain your nonsense in slavery you. right it's fucking now goodness, right now in slavery that sporadicus the white boy wants to do something about why is this white man more in favor of helping these these enslaved africans than you are i'm not entertaining your nonsense i said yeah of course you're not because you'd let them, yeah. you'd let them remain in slavery because you'd need to violate some uh, fucked up uh, principle to, to do something about it. Right. Whereas LSP, Spartacus, Lactoid, and I would say, hey, no, you don't get to enslave people. Fuck you. 
All right, someone more. No, you literally so already admitted gotta, that you're that's willing gotta, to Corey. enslave people. Corey, Corey, uh, Corey, Corey, well, and then if um, LSB says something. Yeah, I'll keep it brief, and yeah, my point is long, uh, long gone. But I just, uh, I'll just ask a question as a point of clarification, just to maybe understand Scott's philosophy um, a little bit better. Um, uh, and I, I, I'm assuming it'll be, I'm fairly certain it'll be a simple question. But it seems like you know a large part of the issue you have is like you know money taken from you or taxation to like fund war. Uh, I'm curious, how would you feel about, for example, like a GoFundMe to fund war? Would you be okay with that? If there was a GoFundMe to fund a specific organization in, well, when you say war, like the, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be okay with that. When you say a military action in defense of people that are being aggressed upon, a special that are operation. asking for resources, yeah, I'd be okay with that. Okay, yeah, that that's the army of pedophile. The army of pedophiles is marching on the school, and the school says the army of pedophiles is coming. We need a security force. We don't have the necessary resources. Please donate money. Not only would I be okay with it, I would donate money to the Kyle Ritten heroes to show up and and set up the defensive line to protect the school from the army of pedophiles. Perfectly voluntary, perfectly circle. perfectly defensive, and perfectly acceptable form of violence that go, doesn't require aggression. Go ahead, um, LSP. If you have anything to add. Um, I wanted to ask Scott a question and see if he's still willing to go down this, this logic tree. I'm wondering, Scott, if an ethnic cleansing broke out in Afghanistan and there were thousands of thousands of dead and thousands and thousands of enslaved, like, how would you stop that? How do you think that should be stopped? How would I personally stop no, it? No, no, how should that be stopped? That's what the one I meant to ask. How should that be stopped? How, how ought the genocide be stopped? Well, probably the people committing the genocide should stop committing genocide. That's how it ought to be stopped. Okay, thank you. And if they but, just like to keep going in perpetuity until they complete the genocide, <laughs> like nobody else gets to come in and stop them. So we just. Are, I didn't are, say are, that. Are, are, are I said multiple times. So, are they going to genocide so many people that they just decide to stop genociding? Are they, hey, gonna they like, get bored? Oh, it, it, it's, oh, it's, oh, like it's like the future now, on a kill bots, right? Well, you once asked they, me that you asked me limit, they can't kill anymore. You asked me an ought, which is a moral question of what should Honest be done. God, guys, the perfect answer. Like a gotcha question. The perfect answer. Curious. No, the perfect answer is that the people committing genocide should stop. That is the most moral response. And if they don't to want to question. stop, then what? The problem is it was a passive voice. I already question. gave you that. <laughs> I already gave you that, which is that if, if mercenary corporations or whatever want to get fucking bank loans from the people that are being stopped and they get together a GoFundMe or a bank loan or whatever, okay. and people voluntarily choose to go raped. fight, how do you stop it? You can they fight. should just keep the with a GoFundMe. Okay. <laughs> Hey man, go fund me. Hey, you know what I mean? Like, you know, GoFundMe might stop the Canadian police, you know, with keffels out there. So you never don't underestimate the power of GoFundMe. Uh yeah, nobody's got shit for that, huh? They don't want to talk about keffels. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't I don't know keffels, but they sound like a, a, a bitch and a retard, so who cares? <laughs> oh my god. Why? Why? Uh, uh Keffels, if you see this, I don't endorse Clip it. This. Prime supports you know this. <laughs> I have I have Keffles, rated Keffels and I My uh, positions are them. my own, not Prime's, Prime's okay. Canceled. I know I know unfortunately I haven't managed to work my way into Prime's ass and puppet him around yet. So <laughs> my positions are still my own. So fuck you, Keffels. I don't know you, but okay, if that's like a big deal, fuck you. Well, um, any which way. Yeah, I hmm. I'd just uh, rather not fuck people I don't know personally, but whatever. I have. Um, I don't know why we're talking about her on a panel. She's not on. Let's get the topic. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't even know who this person is. Prime, help okay. us, please. Is this anti okay, okay, okay. So let's move on from that. Um, so there's a anti. Um, I, I'm an anti imperialist. I'm very skeptical of imperial power. Uh, but I, I, I can't say that it's not. Um, uh. Uh, it, it's there isn't a convincing argument uh, to say that overall that we can lower human suffering, um, and I I don't put hmm, maybe I'm not sure if I should say uh, just say you agree with me. That's where uh, you're going. No, uh, it's it's I don't put American lives above others' lives, right? Um, so. Uh, and what I mean by that is that, like, when we talk about, like, soldier, like, the death of soldiers, right, what we do in this country all the time is we say that, like, uh, so many uh, American soldiers died um, in this military operation. And then we don't talk about the people in this foreign, 
country that died. Like it, it could be uh, exponentially more, logarithmically more. But we talked about how many uh, dead American soldiers. So I never put uh, uh, those fives uh, so above, I've got a, right? So I've got a but question. if that's the case, then that, if that's if if, that, I, if I'm not putting those, those lives above, uh, then on the other end, if we take that military action and uh, we lose a lot of American lives, but in the end we uh, and, uh, save and enhance and enrich the lives of uh, logarithmically more of these foreigners, then why is not a bet that I would take? Prime, and I'm not exactly prime, sure why. I, I kind of want clarification. So, say in this hypothetical that we sent the Navy SEALs to go get Osama bin Laden, right? Um, and the Navy SEALs kill 500 um, Al Qaeda members. And they get Osama bin Laden, and we lost six seals. Um, do you think the loss of six seals is more mourning, or the loss of the five hundred Al Qaeda members that were defending Osama bin Laden? Oh, oh, oh! I see. Um, hmm. Well, no, no. There's a difference between I'm like an active combatant, right? Like okay. if we're if they're like if we're talking about killing Nazis, right? Just for a second, like we're we talking about well, killing Nazis. I didn't Nazis. want to go the Nazi route, but yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But like, okay. yeah, it's just it's it's an easy one. Like if we're talking about uh, killing Nazis, then I have a problem killing Nazis. If there if there's an opposing force, then we're going to have to kill that opposing force. Right? It is what it is. Um, so I'm I'm more concerned about like bystanders. The innocent yeah. bystanders. Okay. I, yeah. I, I was just trying to get clarification. It wasn't a gotcha. I was just trying to clarify. Like the wedding okay. in, in Yemen, you know, that, that Obama drone bombed and killed children and women and innocent people. And, and But we got this terrorist as well. Like, it's, you know, this kind of calculations are what get made. And that, I think that one, I think everyone can agree, was a big fuck up and shouldn't have happened. But what you shouldn't you do. Adjust oh, sorry, those numbers no. and you can have fewer innocent people dying and more terrorists being killed and everyone has a different you know line that they would cross in order to consider that to be an acceptable acceptable trade-off you shouldn't you shouldn't look at I, like i agree with you prime guys but you should go further right you shouldn't look at like a, a framework of people as a whole what you should respect is the rights of the individual Right. And when you're talking about Al Qaeda members protecting Osama bin Laden, for example, right, then what you're talking about is criminals, criminals that have acted in, in such a capacity that they can no longer justify um, until they they until they reach some form of um, not retribution, but. Um, oh, God, uh, not retributive retributive justice right and paying for the crimes that they have committed that they cannot justify the non-aggression principle using being used against themselves and so you have every right to go out and attack or attempt to capture or kill these people that are terrorists and murderers um in in whatever name because they those rights can't be justified but the individual like those individuals at the wedding right just one is a problem it is a criminal act to engage intentionally in the destruction of somebody for the greater good to get this terrorist to kill other people. You have violated the rights of the individual. It doesn't there's no number that matters, and it's no, there's no specific ethnicity or origin that that matters here. What matters is that an individual was murdered. Uh, the easy so, one is Al Zawahiri, right? Because he was we killed him and nobody else, even though people were very very near him. But that you know. That that's bladed because, drone just took him out and nobody US, else. That's because the U.S. military created, uh, like, th th that, I think, I believe that was the first time it was ever used. But that's because the U.S. military created a very, very uh, advanced design of a uh, projectile being blasted that would kill only the designated target and not blow up upon impact. Um, so, absolutely awesome American ingenuity. Yeah. Um, and I think that that should always be the intention is to kill the designated target and without, uh, right, right. I, I, without having I guess oh, oh, no, no, actually outside. before you uh, leave um, uh, Scott I just wanted to ask you a quick question and then we're going to move on to the next topic um, but just very quick question mm -hmm. um, uh, those Al Qaeda soldiers right let's say 500 Al Qaeda soldiers guarding Osama bin Laden uh, what if somehow uh, that all of them were like fresh out of Al Qaeda Academy um, and they had literally done nothing, and their only uh, quote-unquote crime is defending um, Osama bin Laden at that moment. 
uh, do they still deserve to die? Like it is still. I don't. Enga- yeah, I don't. I don't engage in thought crimes. Right. These are four hundred innocent people. Uh, they're innocent, but but they're defending the the criminal. So like they're they are. They're four hundred innocent people. Okay, so, no, so that, they haven't, if they haven't committed any acts of aggressions against other people, other than believing in a religion or a cause that's different than yours, especially when you're talking about young people that might, I don't know, have been, you know, in a country that's been fucked with by the United States easily since 1980, like, or possibly closer, if you want to look at Operation Cyclone since 72, since 1972, America's been dropping bombs on people and they're like, fuck America. Like, I'm ready to like fucking defend my people and defend my nation. Those are innocent people that have not committed any acts of aggression on anyone. And you're just engaging in a thought crime that says our ideals and values are better than yours. Therefore, we get to kill you. Of course, even once you have, you could say, you know, have have some cause for believing what they believe. I think that's one of the it's reasons. Not about the, why it's not about the cause. It's just about whether or not have they committed an act of aggression. Well, oh. like, for instance, a lot of the people in Guantanamo Bay are there because they we they were on a battlefield fighting American invaders and we're treating them as if they're terrorists who came over here and did 9-11. And there's a but there's a fundamental difference. Between yeah, many them. of them aren't criminals. Right. Like defending right. your home is not a criminal behavior. Right. All right. I just wanted to hear that. No, thank you so much.